all praises to the most high. So tonight's topic is called the Shabdil Massacre. The Shabdil Massacre. So that's tonight's topic. We're going to be going over this because on Monday, there's the so-called holiday when they are going to be commemorating what happened in 1969 when our forefathers and foremothers was put to death for standing against the regime of apartheid. Okay? So we're going to be going over that history, so pay close attention because it's quite pertinent this day. Our sons and daughters have no idea what's going on, what that day is about. So we're going to bring it to their remembrance. Okay? Give me the book of Job, chapter 8, verse 8. Let's start there. Job 8, verse 8. Okay, come on. Job chapter 8, verse 8. Pray. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age, and prepare mm -hmm. thyself to the search of their fathers. So now this is a commandment. The Lord is commanding our forefathers. The listen is commanding us. He's prophesying to our forefather Job. He said, listen, he says, I pray thee. You understand? He says, of the former age. He says, inquire of the former age. And prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. We must search the history of our forefathers. And it's, like, it's all written in the Bible. You understand? The most that God used our forefathers in the past, the Lord is using our forefathers that are back in this life again. You understand? So now watch this. Get to 32 verse 7. So we must inquire of the former age, meaning we must learn our history. We must go into the Bible because the Bible is our history. You understand? Everything you want to know about yourself, you must go into the Bible because your history is recorded up in here. Okay? Deuteronomy 32 verse 7. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 7. Mm -hmm. Remember the days of old. Consider Remember the days of old. The days of old, that's the former age that we read in Job. The days of old is the former age. Come on. Consider the years of many generations. Consider the years of many generations, the generations of our forefathers. He says, consider those many years of the generations of old, our forefathers that we must inquire about. Go ahead. Ask thy father, and he will ask show your thee. Father. Hold on. He says, ask your father. Why is he saying something like that? He says, ask your father. Go ahead. And he will show thee. Go ahead. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. And thy elders, and they will tell thee. What is the Lord teaching us? He's letting us know that these forefathers will be back in these last days. You understand? To recover the 12 tribes of Israel. Watch this. Give me the book of 2nd Ezra. Okay, give me 2nd Ezra. 2nd Ezra chapter 1. Read verse 38. Watch this. 2nd Ezra chapter 1, verse 38. Watch this thing right here. Okay. 2nd Ezra chapter 1, verse 38. Read. And now, brother, behold what glory, and see the people that come from the east. And see the people that come from the east. You understand? Because remember, we are the people, we are people that are coming from the near east. Jerusalem. Okay, go ahead. Watch this. Read. And to whom I will give for leaders. You see that part Abraham. right there? And hold on. And to whom I will give for leaders. So the Lord is saying, in the last days, I'm going to raise up leaders. I'm going to raise up your forefathers of the past. I'm going to regenerate them in these last days to be leaders unto you. Go ahead. Abraham, Isaac, Abraham, Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, go ahead. And Jacob. Mm -hmm. Read. Now read that thing again for me, second Ezra 1, verse 38. Second book of Ezra. Chapter 1, verses 38. Read. And, and now, brother, behold, what glory, and see the people that cometh from the east. And see the people that cometh from the east. The people that cometh from the east is talking about who? The 12 tribes of Israel, because we come from the near east. That's the so-called Middle East today, but that's the near east. Okay, go ahead. And to whom I will give for leaders? And to him, Abraham. and to whom the people, hold on. The people that come from the east is as unto whom, unto those people, I'm going to give them leaders. I'm going to raise up leaders for them in the last days. Go ahead. Abraham, mm -hmm. Isaac, and Jacob. Read. Hoseas. Amos. Hosea. Hoseas is Hosea. Go ahead. Amos and Micah. Mm -hmm. Micah, that's Micah. Read. 
Joel. Joel. Abdiah. That's Obadiah. Abdias is Obadiah. Go ahead. And Jonas. Jonas, that's Jonah. Go ahead. Nahum. Nahum, read. And, and Abakuk. That's Habakkuk, read. Sophonias. That's Zephaniah, read. Agagis. Agias, that's Haggai, read. Agis, Zachary. Zachary, that's Zechariah, read. And Malachi. And who? And Malachi. And Malachi, that's Malachi. Go ahead. Which is called also an angel of the Lord. Meaning the messengers of the Most High God. Okay, now watch this. You see that part right there? It says, and Malachi. Watch this. Give me that in Malachi chapter 4. Malachi 4 verse 4. Watch this. The Most High says he's going to send leaders in the last days to wake us up. Okay, watch this. Malachi chapter 4 verse 4. Read that. The book of Malachi chapter 4 verse 4. Read. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, mm -hmm. which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with Read. the statute and judgments. So you see what he's saying? The last book of the Old Testament, of the Old Testament it says, remember ye the law of Moses. So there's no such thing that the laws of God are done away with. He says, remember, you Israelites, remember the law of Moses. You understand? Which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel, the people from the east, okay, with the statutes and judgments. Read. Behold, I will send you, Elijah the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. You see what the Lord is promising us? He says, behold, I'm going to send you Elijah the prophet before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Meaning before the Lord returns. What would Elijah do? Go ahead. Verse 6. Read. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. You see what Elijah would do? Elijah would be back in these last days. The proof that Elijah came and left is the fact that today we remember who we are. We remember that we are the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. We don't call ourselves South Africans no more. We are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of because Elijah came and left. Read that again, verse 6. The book of Malachi chapter 4, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. Read. And the heart of the children to their fathers. Stop right there. So Elijah would turn the heart of the fathers to the children. The heart of the fathers is his Bible. The heart of the fathers is this Bible. The fathers is the ones we read about in 2 Genesis 1, verse 38 and 39. You understand? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Malachi, Elijah. You understand? Uh, Hosea, Habakkuk, Zacharias. Those are the people, those are the fathers, okay? He's going to turn the heart of the fathers to the children. We are the children, okay? Read on. And the heart of the children to their fathers. Read. Let I come and smite the earth with a curse. You see that thing? Before judgment comes, before the decree bring forth that we read about in, in Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1. So what is the Lord telling us? He says, listen, before the, your, my son returns, I'm going to send leaders. These leaders are going to wake you up. These leaders are going to teach you. These leaders will guide you. These leaders will correct you, whether you like it or not. They will shove the laws of God down your throat. That's what the Lord is saying to us right there. You understand? They're not going to sugarcoat nothing. They're not going to cuddle you. They're not going to play with you. They are not going to care about your feelings. You understand? Because in this captivity, we are suffering mental and spiritual decay. We are into our emotions. We care about how we feel. The most said God don't give a damn about your feelings. Now read again, verse 6. Okay? The book of Malachi chapter 2, verse 6. Read. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. Mm -hmm. And the hearts of the children to their fathers. Read. Right. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Mm -hmm. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Before judgment comes on this earth. You already seen the signs of it right now. What the nations are doing. Food shortages and so forth. Things are getting expensive. These are the signs of the end times. So don't sleep. Do not sleep. Okay. Now watch this. 
give me, go back to Deuteronomy 32, read verse 7 again. Deuteronomy 32, verse 7. Okay, the Most High commanded us that we must be in tune with our history. We must know where we come from, who we are, what is required of us before the Lord returns. Now read that. Deuteronomy 32, verse 7 again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 7. Read. Remember the days of old. Mm -hmm. Consider the years of many generations. Go ahead. Ask thy father, and he will show thee. Thy mm -hmm. elders, and they will tell thee. You see that thing? Ask thy father, they will show thee. Meaning the leaders that the Lord will raise up in the last days, they are going to be fathers unto you. Not your friends, fathers unto you. You understand? Some of you black Negroes, you need to get your mind right. That's why this says, he, he will show thee, thy elders, and they will tell thee. You understand? Because it's all spiritual. The Lord has sent you the prophets. The prophets are back. And the prophets are prophesying in the street corners, teaching the people and raising the people up in the spirit of Christ. That's what's going on right now. So there's no time to sleep right now. Okay? Now, read, read, give me that in Romans 15 verse 4. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. Watch this. Okay? Romans chapter 15 verse 4. Read what you got. The book of Romans, chapter 15, verses 4. Read. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written mm -hmm. for our learning, that we, right. through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. You see what they are, this is the Apostle Paul speaking. Is that the things that were written aforetime in the past were written for us to learn from, to learn what our forefathers did in their time, how the Lord used them to deliver the people out of captivity. So guess what? The Apostle Paul says we must not forget that. We read, we read that in the old, we're reading it in the new. Because why is the Apostle Paul bringing this up? Because our people had done forgot. They forgot. They forgot their history. You understand? They were neglecting it. They didn't give a damn about it. Because why? They were indulging in the lusts of Rome. Like we have people are indulging in the lust of America, of Europe, the West. You understand? That's the same thing we was doing back then. We are doing it today. And the Lord says, I'm going to raise you leaders. The leaders will what? Will, will teach you to get your mind together before the Lord returns. Okay? Read that again. Verse 4. The book of Romans chapter 15 verse 4. Read. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning mm -hmm. that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. You see that thing? That through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So our hope is going to be in the laws of God. The prophecy, the history, what happened to us and why it took place. Okay? Watch this. Give me Hebrews 11 verse 23. When you notice about our forefathers, they were in tune with their history. You understand? Prophecy. The law. That's, what, that's how they build their foundation on. Christ. Okay? Now read that in Hebrews 11 verse 23. Come on. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 23. Read. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents mm -hmm. because they saw he was a proper child. Read. And, they were, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. They were not afraid of Pharaoh's commandment. So now, because he wanted to kill um, the sons. Now, watch this. So is he, is, he, is he that part right there says by what? Read that verse again, verse 23. The book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23. By mm -hmm. faith, Moses. Not right there. By faith, by faith, Moses. By, not by politics, not by Christianity and religion and democracy. Mm -mm. By faith, faith in who? The Lord. By faith in the Most High God. You understand? So you, when the Most High God is... The most that God is getting ready to deliver his people, the people must cry unto him. Meaning things have to get so bad that now you realize that, because the most that God has, is going to turn things up. He's going to turn the heat up so that the people realize that politics is not the way. Because right now they don't see it. That the people must realize that democracy is not the way. That the people must see that the government is not your mother. The government is not going to deliver you out of slavery. The people must understand that. Meaning the government must... He must put it out there in the public like we don't give a damn about you. Then that's when the black man will wake up. Then that's when the black woman will get her mind right in the scriptures. Things have not gotten that bad yet. They will get worse. So much so that they're going to look for this book. They're going to look for the prophets so that they can what? They learn. 
and humble down to what this Bible is saying. The elect, of course. Okay? Read that again, verse 23. Read. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 23. By mm -hmm. faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because Read. they saw he was a proper child and mm -hmm. they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Read. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. You see that thing? Chosen he says, when he, was come, hold on. when he was come to years, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter because Moses, our forefather, was raised as an Egyptian. He was an Egyptian prince. You understand? He says he refused. He grew up in a royal house. You understand? He was, he was, he was, he was a general in the army. You understand? Moses knew military strategy and so forth. So now it says when he was come to age, meaning when his senses was like, wait a minute, I know I'm not, I'm not one of them. I'm not one of these people. I can tell. Just like we can tell, Lord, we are not one of these people. We are, we don't know who we are, but we can tell, Lord, we don't fit in. You understand? That's what, Mo, that's what came upon Moses. So now what we're reading here is the Mosa is getting ready to use Moses to deliver the 12 tribes of Israel out of Egypt. Now watch this. Now, give me to 12, 28, verse 15. Okay. We're coming back here. So just keep this in mind. This time Moses was in Egypt. You understand? He was come to the, his, his, his full age. You understand? He refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Watch this. Now, the 12, 28, verse 15. Pay close attention. Okay. Yes, sir. Go ahead. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. Read. But it shall come to pass mm. if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to Read. observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So now Moses is giving us the, the, the punishments if we break the commandments. These are warning shots right here. The Moses is using Moses to tell us, if you break my laws, I'm going to judge you. You understand? I'm going to destroy you if you break my laws. And right now where we are in South Africa, you understand? Calling ourselves South Africans, Bantus and whatnot, it's an example that we are destroyed as a nation. We don't remember who we are. You understand? So as part of the, part of the, the judgments, Moses is listing up all the punishments that will come upon us for disobedience. Now watch this. Read verse 68 now. Remember, Hebrews 11 verse 23, 24, the Lord is, is, is getting ready to get Moses to deliver the 12 tribes out of Israel. Now watch this. Read that, verse 68. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with Read. ships mm -hmm. by the way whereof I speak unto thee. Thou mm -hmm. shalt see it no more again. Okay? And mm -hmm. they, ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. So now, what's happening here is Moses is telling us, listen, you furthermore, the Lord is going to bring you into Egypt again. We are in the wilderness at this time. You understand? We are in the wilderness at this time. Moses is teaching us what's going to happen to us. We just came out of Egypt. We are in the wilderness is telling us this is what's going to befall you in the last days if you don't obey what this Bible says. Now, you see that part right there when it says the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships again. So the first time I'm taking you back now, before we were in the wilderness, before we were delivered, it says the Lord will bring you into Egypt again. So the first time when we went to into Egypt, I'm going to touch on that. You understand? Watch this. Because here the, the Lord will, the, he will the, the people on the sea will ask you, so why does it say the Lord will bring you to Egypt again? You understand? So the first time, when did this happen? So let's deal with that. Watch this. Give me the book of Judith 5 verse 10. Judith chapter 5 verse 10. Okay. Yes, sir. Read that. Judith 5 verse 10. Watch this. The book of Judith, chapter 5, verse 10. Mm -hmm. But when a famine covered all the land of Canaan, they went down into Egypt and sojourned there. While, yeah. they, they, were not, while they were nourished, 
and became there a great multitude, so that one could not number their nation. So now, this is what's going on here. This is um, this is during the time when Halophonies, Nebuchadnezzar's captain, you understand, he was asking about us. You understand? So now he's giving a rundown of our history because the nations know our history. So we're reading here, you understand? Them explaining to the to Halophonies, um, um, no, Halophon is the captain of Nebuchadnezzar's army. He said, listen, I'm going to give you a rundown um, of who these people are and what their history is about so that you know who you're dealing with. So guess what? The same way the nations knew our history back then, the nations, they know our history today. You understand? So that's how they know how to deal with us. They know what makes us weak. They know what makes us strong. Understand that. Now read verse 10 again. The book of Judah, chapter 5, verse 10. Mm -hmm. But when a famine covered all the land, covered all the land of Canaan, they went down into Egypt and sojourned there. While hey. they were nourished and became there a great multitude, so that one could not number their nation. So now we said there was a famine. You understand? It covered the land of Canaan, and then we went down into Egypt and sojourned there. I'm gonna touch on that. Get me. Genesis 42, verse 1. We went down into the land of Egypt because there was a what? There was a famine in Canaan. Now watch this. Genesis chapter 42, verse 1. Let's get the history. Okay. This will give you a better understanding of what we're dealing with when it says the Lord will bring you into Egypt again. Let's see what happened the first time when we, we came into Egypt. Now read that. The book of Genesis, chapter 42, verse 1. Read. Now, when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt. Jacob said unto his sons, why do you look one upon another? So he says, listen, we're starving. Why are you looking one upon another? Why are, you, why are you looking at each other for? You understand? There's corn in Egypt. So we need to go, you need to go down there and get some corn. Go ahead. And he said, behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither and buy for us from thence. And we may live and not die. Great. And, and Joseph's ten brethren went down to buy corn in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Great. But Benjamin, Joseph's brother, Jacob sent not with his brethren, for he said, let's peradventure mischief befall him. Great, because guess what they did? Remember, they sold their brother. You understand? Go ahead. And the sons of Israel came to buy corn among those that came. For the famine was in the land of Canaan. For the famine was what? For the famine was in the land of Canaan. The famine was in the land of Canaan. Give me Genesis 43 verse one. For the famine was in the land of Canaan. So there was famine in the land of Canaan where our forefather Jacob was with and his sons. Okay, go ahead. The book of Genesis chapter 43 verse one. Great. And the famine was so in the land. The famine was so in the land. Which land? The land of Canaan. Go ahead. And it came to pass, when they had eaten up the corn which they had brought out of Egypt, their father said unto them, Go again, buy us a little food. Okay, so when it was run out, they said, Go down there again and get some food. Okay, that means our forefather, our forefather Jacob, he had a plan that he had money saved up. So much so that when there was there was famine, he was able to use the money that was saved up to go down into Egypt to buy corn so that they don't what? They don't starve to death. Okay, read that again, verse one and two. One more again. The book of Genesis chapter 43, verse one. Right. And the famine was so in the land. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when they had eaten up the corn which they had brought out of Egypt, their father said unto them, go again, buy us a little food. Now give me Genesis 45, verse 18 now. Genesis 45, verse 18. Watch this. The book of Genesis chapter 45, verse 18. Now we're well, fast forwarding. Remember, Joseph, when they arrived in Egypt, Joseph, he, was, he, he, was, he put them to the test. You understand? Because he knew who they were. They could not recognize him. You understand? Because he blended in. He looked like the Egyptians. Okay? In the manner of dress code and so forth. So now... At this point, Joseph is revealing his identity. Watch what happens here. Because remember what we read 
in Judith 5, verse 10, it says, they went down into Egypt and sojourned there. While they were, they were, they were, they were, they were nourished and became there a great multitude. That nourishment part. This is, that's where Joseph comes in. Okay, read that, verse 18. The book of Genesis chapter 45, verse 18. Read. And take your father and your households and come unto me. And mm -hmm. I will give you the good of the land of Egypt. And he shall eat of the fat of the land. So now this is Joseph, Joseph speaking to his brethren. Okay. That I'm going to take care of you. Okay. Watch this. Genesis 45, 46 now. Verse 1. Get Genesis 46 verse 1. So now they're going to go into Egypt. Remember I said listen. Go and get your stuff and come back here. You understand? There's plenty for you. You will survive here. You'll be alright. I'll look up to you. Okay. Read that. The book of Genesis chapter 46, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And Israel took his journey with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices unto the God of his father, Isaac. Because he's getting ready to leave. Go ahead. And God spake unto Israel in visions of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, here, I, here am I. Mm -hmm. And he said, I am God, the God of thy father. Fear not to go down in, into Egypt, for I will they, for I will they make of thee a great nation. No, that part right there it says, fear not to go what? Fear not to go down into Egypt. It says, fear not to go down into Egypt, based on what Joseph said. It says, now fear not to go down into Egypt. Read that part again, verse 3. Read it again. The book of Genesis, chapter 46, verse 3. Mm -hmm. And he said, I am God, the God of thy father. Fear not to go down into Egypt. For I will make thee, for I will they make of thee a great nation. He says, I'm going to make you a great nation when you arrive in the land of Egypt. That's what we read in Judith, chapter 5, verse 10. Now give me Exodus 1 and 1. Exodus chapter 1, verse 1. We're going to read that. Okay, read. The book of Exodus, chapter 1, verses 1. Now, these are the names of the children of Israel, which came into Egypt. Every man and his household came with Jacob. So now, remember what, the, what we read in Genesis 46. Genesis 46 is a more detailed account of the, the, the sons of Jacob that came into Egypt. You understand? And their sons also. So Genesis 46, you can read that on your own. It gives you a detailed breakdown of our fathers and their children that came into Egypt. Okay, read that again. Exodus 1 and 1. The book of Exodus chapter 1, verses 1. Mm -hmm. Now these are the names of the children of Israel, which came into Egypt, every man and his household came with Jacob. Wait. Reuben. Reuben. Sim. That's the so-called, hold on. Reuben, that's the so-called Seminole Indians of today. Go ahead. Simeon. That's the so-called Dominican Republic, the Dominicans of today. Go ahead. Levi. That's the so-called Haitians of today. Read on. And Judah and Judah, the so-called Bantus and Negroes of today. Read. Issachar. Issachar. Those are the so-called Mexicans Zemba. or the... Hold on. Issachar, that's the so-called Mexicans of today. During the Dark Ages, they were called the Aztecs, the Aztecs Empire. Okay, go ahead. Zebulon. Zebulon. Zebulon, that's the Mayans during the time of the Dark Ages, from Guatemala to Panama. Okay, go ahead. And Benjamin. Benjamin. They're in the Caribbean islands. Um, our brothers in Jamaica and so forth, Trinidad. Those are the, um, the tribe of Benjamin over there. Go Dan. ahead. Dan was swallowed up in, ben, in the tribe of Benjamin. Read. Dan. In lower, Dan. hold on, lesser and greater Antilles. Lower, lo, lesser and greater Antilles, that's where the tribe of Dan is. You understand? They are scattered among the tribe of Benjamin, right? In the islands. Come on. And Naphtali. 
Natalidad in South America, Argentina, in Chile. Read. Good. Yeah, that's the so-called Native American Indians of today. And Go Asia. Ahead. And Asia. Today, and as the Asherites, hold on, the Asherites is the people that are called the Incas. The Incas, the Inca Indians, okay? These are the children of Israel, okay? From Colombia to Uruguay. Today, they are, back in the day, during the Dark Ages, they were called the Inca Empire, okay? So now, keep reading. Go ahead. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob was 70 souls. Mm -hmm. For Joseph was in Egypt already. Because Joseph was already in Egypt. Okay, because remember, he was sold by his brothers. You understand? And he became, he became a prisoner. Then he became second in charge to Egypt to help Pharaoh. Okay, now watch this. Go back to Judith 5 verse 10. Let's go back there. Judith chapter 5, verse 10. The book of Judith, chapter 5, verse 10. Read. But when a famine covered all the land of Canaan, they went down into Egypt and sojourned there. You see that thing? While they were we nourished. Down, we, we went, hold on. We went down into Egypt and we sojourned there. That's what we was reading. Go ahead. while they were nourished and became they a great multitude so that one could not number their nation. Because guess what? We outnumbered them. So we were many. There was many of us in Egypt. So now what we're reading here is that and became they a great multitude. We was nourished by who? We was nourished by Joseph. You understand? As it became they a great multitude. Okay, hold on. Give me Exodus now. Let's go back to Exodus. Exodus chapter 1 verse 7. Watch this. The book of Exodus, chapter 1, verse 7. Read. And the children of Israel were fruitful mm -hmm. and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty. Read. And the land was filled with them. You see that thing? That's what we just read in Judith 5. So here in Judith 5, a heathen is reciting our history. You understand? Moses here is writing down what is what what was what taking place? You understand? Remember, Moses is writing a history. Remember what Moses wrote. He wrote the history that he didn't he even himself did not live in that history. You understand? When you read Genesis 1 and all that, Moses did not even exist during that time, but the Lord showed him the history that he himself did not even exist when he when when he wrote it, but he was shown the past. Okay. So now read that again, Exodus chapter 1, verse 7. One more again. The book of Exodus, chapter 1, verse 7. Read. And the children of Israel were fruitful mm -hmm. and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty, and the mm -hmm. land was filled with them. Mm -hmm. Okay, Soldier John, I need you to read that verse again. Read verse 7 again. The book of Exodus, yes, sir, chapter 1, verse 7. Mm -hmm. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly Read. and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty, and the land was filled with them. So we became more and mightier than them in number. We always outnumber all these nations wherever we at, especially now also in these last days. We outnumber them, and they know it. You understand? Now watch this. Go back to Judith now. We're going to read chapter 5, verse 11 now. Judith chapter 5, verse 11. Remember, we read in Deuteronomy 28, verse 68, it says, the Lord shall bring them, in, bring you into Egypt again. Meaning the second time. But now we went back into history to see the first time when we came into Egypt. You understand? And when we was in Egypt, what did we become? Okay, now read that. Judith chapter 5, verse 11. The book of Judith, chapter 5, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the king of Egypt rose up against them and dealt subtlety with them and brought them low with laboring in brick 
and made them slaves. And made them what? And made them slaves. So we, would, we became slaves. Remember, we came into Egypt, jo Joseph looked after us. You understand? Now Joseph is gone. Joseph, our forefather, has passed on. You understand? So now it says, therefore, the king of Egypt rose up against them. Now watch this. Give me the book of Exodus chapter 1, verse 8. Exodus 1, verse 8. The king of Egypt that rose up against us after Joseph died, who didn't remember nothing that our forefather Joseph did before that. Because remember, when Joseph was in Egypt, when everybody else was starving, you understand, during the seven years of famine, Egypt had plenty because of our forefather Jacob, but because of our forefather Joseph in Egypt. You understand? Now read that. Exodus chapter 1, verse 8. Read. The book of Exodus chapter 1, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Now there rose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. You see that thing? There's this new king that rose over Egypt. His name is Amos the first. Amos the first. Amos the first is the king of the 18th dynasty. Okay, Amos the first. He's the king that rose up over Egypt that didn't know Joseph, nor he did he give a damn about what our forefather Joseph did in Egypt. You understand? Go ahead. And he said unto, the, unto his people, behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. So what is Pharaoh doing? Amos the first is having a council with his people, his counselors and so forth. They are discussing us, how to what, how to deal with us, how to destroy us, how to keep us enslaved, how to build their empire. You understand? So he's having a council on how to keep us enslaved. The same thing that happened back then is what the nations have done today and are still doing to oppress the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, verse 10. Come, Come on. on, let us do what? Yes, sir, the book Exodus chapter 1 verse 10. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest okay. they multiply. And it come to pass that when they, when they falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us. And so get them up out of the land. So now this is over a period of time. Over a period of time after they had the council, they said, listen, we need to deal wisely with them. Because if they multiply, they continue to be more and more and mightier than us. If there's any, if they fall out a war, meaning they come together to fight against us, they'll also join unto our enemies to overthrow us. So they say, we need to sit down and see how we can destroy them. Mentally, spiritually, and physically. And that's what they, that's exactly what they've done. Okay, go ahead, read. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. Read. And they built for Pharaoh's treasure cities, Piton and Ramses. Piton and Ramses. So now at this point, who's ruling at this point in verse 11? This is years of history that has gone by. You understand? The verse 11 is the 19th dynasty during the time when Ramses II was the king. That's why we built Pythom and Ramses. Okay? So the way they dealt, they dealt with us wisely, what did they do? All this, give me that in uh, Exodus 5, verse 14. This is how they dealt wisely with us when we were in Egypt because they realized that, listen, how, do, how are we going to subdue them? How are we going to keep them enslaved? We need to use their own people to rule over them, to oppress them on our behalf. And that's what's going on today. Yes, we have a quote-unquote black government, but these are just puppet leaders. You understand? These are just pawns in a huge chess game. Who's ruling, who's running the earth? Esau, Edom, America, the EU. You understand? They're all running the show. And the other nations are helping them. China, India, Pakistan, the Arabs and all, they're all helping the white men who's sitting on top of all the heathens to oppress the 12 tribes of Israel. Understand that, okay? Exodus 5 is 14. Read what you got. The book of Exodus chapter 5, verse 14. Mm -hmm. And the officers of the children of Israel, which Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them, were beaten and demanded. Wherefore, have you not fulfilled your task in making brick both yesterday and today? 
and here to four as here to four meaning as 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 always so what did, what did pharaoh do what did pharaoh do pharaoh used our own people you understand to 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 be taskmasters over us you understand supervisors at our jobs managers at our jobs and so forth yes that's what they did that's what they that's what's going on today as well the same thing that happened back then is the same thing that's going on today what you know at, at your job you look at your manager or your supervisor is a black man or a black woman especially if they put the black woman over you guess what she's going to make sure that she makes you feel it as a black man because they are conditioned in this society to do what to deal in an evil way against us just like eve listen to the white man in the garden you understand to go against adam that's the same thing today when the white man says the black woman in position of power so called position of power who do they put under her is always black men a lot of the times why to keep the black men in check they are using our women to do it you understand so now what we reading here that's what pharaoh did so now the empires that are ruling today they study our history they see how the nations the dark nations that oppressed us they see they study our history so how did they deal with them guess what we're going to do the same thing but we're going to make sure that we don't repeat their mistakes because when we were in egypt we knew we were israel when we were during when we, when we were taken into captivity by the assyrians by the babylonians we knew we were israel when we went into slavery under the persians we knew we were israel but when we went into slavery under the greeks guess what the greeks did the greeks make sure that you must strip them of their nationality of their culture you must not allow them to keep their laws because if they do we going to have problems that's when our nationalists started to be taken away from us then after the greeks came the romans during the time of christ you understand we still knew we were israel but guess what they started to do what they started to strip us of our nationality guess who was helping them the black man that was set over us during the time of rome who was that the scribes and pharisees today is your pastors today your tdjs your kreflo dollar your bushiri your mboro those are the people that are representing the scribes and pharisees back then they are back today those black ashy demons now hold this give me give me john 11 verse 47 i'm going to show you something okay john chapter 11 verse 47 watch this i'm fast forwarding now to rome okay what happened during the time of rome watch this read that john chapter 11 start of verse 46 we're going to read down okay come on the book of john chapter 11 verses 46 Read, but some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. You see that thing? So there were those people that followed the scribes and Pharisees, and there were spies. They were spying on what Christ was teaching, what Christ and the disciples was teaching. They were pushing the gospel. You understand? So they went to the scribes and Pharisees and reported what 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 Christ was teaching. You understand? And that the people were getting healed. So these were the enemies of progress. We had them, we had them back then, we're gonna have them today. Understand that. So don't be naive up in here. Okay. Now watch this. Hold this. Give me the book of Luke 20. Luke chapter 20. I'm gonna show you something. Luke 20, verse 19. Okay. Luke chapter 20, verse 19. Let's read that. The book of Luke, chapter 20, verse 19. Mm -hmm. And the chief priests and the scribes. The same hour sought to lay hands on him. Meaning Christ. And they feared, right? and they feared the people. They feared the, the people. They were, hold on. So the scribe, the chief priests, the scribes and Pharisees wanted to lay hands on our Lord and Savior. But they could not do it, he says, and they feared the people because the people believed on Christ. There were those people that believed what Christ was teaching. You understand? Just like today, there are those that believe when we teach on the streets. So, but there are those that don't believe and they want to do harm to us, but they are afraid of the people that are actually listening. Understand, right? For they perceived that he had spoken this parable against them. Because when we teach, those that don't believe, they get offended. Those that hate what the Bible is saying, they want to kill the messenger. You understand? But they really are, they are really against the law. We're just messengers. 
Okay, go ahead. And they watched him. They did what? And they watched him. So the scribes and Pharisees, they watched Christ. Just like they watch our videos on YouTube, just like they come to camp when we teach, but they don't believe nothing we say, but they just sit there to watch, offended at what's coming out. Ray, even in class, by the way. Okay, go ahead. And sent forth spies. They did what? And sent forth spies. They sent forth spies to spy what Christ was doing, where he went. You understand how the people reacted to what he was teaching? How did he, what did he do? How did he heal the people and so forth? They wanted to know all of that. Okay. So there's always spies. There were spies back then. They will be spies this day in the camp and without. Understand that. Go ahead. Which should find themselves just men. And then they pretended that they are about this book. They pretended that they are about this movement. They pretended that they are about the mission, but they are not. Go ahead. That they might take hold of his words, that, that so they might deliver him unto the power and authority of the governor. You see that thing? That they may go to the higher powers that be to report. Hey, by the way, this is what they teach. Meaning these people are anti-government. They are anti this. They are anti that. We're just teaching the Bible. But that's what they're going to do. They're going to slander us among, you know, in the, in the, in before the power of the authority of the governors. Meaning what? The politicians, the pastors, and so forth. They're going to report on us. So it happened back then. It's going to happen today. So how did they deal wisely with them? Back then, during the time of, um, of, the, of Egypt, during the time of Ramses, during the time of Amos the first, guess what? During the time of Rome, they had spies set up. Okay, so now watch this. Go back to John chapter 11 now. John 11, read verse 48 now. Okay. The book of John chapter verse 11. 47. Verse 47, watch this. Excuse me, sir. The book of John chapter 11, verse 47. Read. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we? For this man doeth many miracles. You see that? You see what they did? After they gathered intel from the spies that they sent out to watch what Christ was doing, where he was going, you understand? How many followers and so forth. He says, listen, then now they sit down to have a council. Remember, this is our people. This is our people. This is not the other nations. This is our people right here. So, because who did they report to? These scribes and Pharisees, they answered to who? They answered to Rome. So, in Exodus chapter 5, verse 14, our forefathers that were set over as a supervisors and managers, who did they report to? They reported to Pharaoh. That's the same thing that's going on here. Okay, go ahead. Verse 48, come on. The book of John chapter 11, verse 48. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. You see what they care about? It says, if we let him this man, if we allow him to continue to teach this gospel, it says, all men will believe on him. Meaning, people are going to start to believe on what they teach. People are going to start to follow. People are going to repent. You understand? It says, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. So, who did they report to? They reported to Rome. You understand? So now, the same thing today. Why you wonder why these, these pastors are not teaching the truth according to the Bible? They don't teach that we are the Jews. They don't teach that Christ is only coming to deliver the 12 tribes of Israel. They don't teach that. Why? Because they answer to who? They answer to the World Council of Churches, which is the what? Which is the, the daughter of the Roman Catholic Church. You understand? The Vatican. They, they answer to them. They answer to the Vatican the Roman Catholic Church. So they're not gonna, they're, they're not gonna change the doctrine that the master, meaning Rome, today, America, is forcing them to teach. And they are making money because they get rewarded for that. That's why they, they are billionaires, they are millionaires, they're living lavishly. While we, we where, where do we stay? We don't own Bentleys. We don't own, um, you know, these, uh, these, these Ferraris and whatnot. We don't live in mansions. We live in Kokasi. That's where we stay. 
Salekas and so forth, we're struggling. We're catching taxis and whatnot, okay? We're struggling, but we're pushing the gospel. That's the same thing that was happening back then is what is happening this day. Understand that thing. That's why a lot of the times when you look at these mega churches, they are packed, mainly with women and homosexual men. You understand? Those are the people that are supporting evil and they are funding evil. They will pay for it every Sunday when they go there. When we teach, they say, no, don't judge me and all that, because they know Christianity gives our people license to sin, to commit adultery, to commit fornication, to steal, to lie, to cheat, you understand, to defraud their brothers and sisters. It teaches them to do that. But we teach you that mm -mm, keep the commandments and believe on Christ, the Messiah who died for you. Okay? So I'm showing you here, right there, that what happened back then during the time of Egypt is happening today as well. It happened during the time of Rome, and I'm going to show you today how it's taking place. I touched on it a little bit. Okay, now watch this. Let's go back. Okay, go back to Exodus chapter 5, verse 14. Read that. The book of Exodus chapter 5, verses 14. Read. And the officers of the children of Israel which Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them were beaten and demanded. Wherefore, have you not fulfilled your task in making brick both yesterday and today and as heretofore? You see that? So they set them over them. They set them over us. So to increase the hatred between us when, while they are not there. It's the same thing that happening today when we are at the plantations, you know, in the companies and all that. You, because you deal with your black managers and so forth. And those black managers, their job is to please master their boss. You understand? So when he comes down with instruction, it's not really him talking. It's the boss speaking through him. But because he does not apply this, the Bible, you understand? He, when he looks at you, he sees the devil. So he mistreats you to please master. That's what our forefathers was doing. These are the same Negroes that was complaining when we were in the wilderness, talking about we remember the fish, we remember the cucumbers and the garlics because they were living well, while the rest of us were at the bottom, you know, then building Pharaoh's mega structures and carving out their statues that you see today in the value of the kings. You understand? So go back to Exodus 1 now. Exodus chapter 1. Exodus chapter 1, read verse 11 again. The book of Exodus, the book of Exodus, chapter one, verse eleven. Read. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. Read. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Pithom and Ramses. Pithom and Ramses. That's in the value of the kings. You can Google that; you'll find it. That's one of the main tourist attractions in Egypt today. Python and Ramses. They, those structures are still standing because we built it. You understand? During the time of the 19th dynasty, during when Ramses II was the king. Okay, come on. Come on. Yes, sir. The book of Exodus chapter 1, verse 12. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Mm -hmm. And they grieve because of the children of Israel. So because we're getting, we're becoming more and more. You understand? We were multiplying upon the land. They couldn't control us because it says we don't die, we multiply. So as we're multiplying back then, we are multiplying today. That's why they are introducing these viruses, these man-made diseases and pandemics to kill the children of Israel through vaccines and all of that. They've been doing, they've been doing this since during the time of apartheid, since we got here, they've been doing that. They poison our food, you understand? The food we eat. Because when you go to these shop rides, your, your pick and pays, your boxers and all of that, they're just selling filth to us, you understand? So that we catch diseases, high blood pressure, you understand? Brain aneurysms, you drop dead, gout, you understand? You hardly find vegetables, and if you do find them, they are not fresh. You understand? There's, there's, um, there's, you, you, you're not going to find veggie markets and all of that, but you're going to find fast food joints. You're going to find McDonald's. 
you're gonna find um kfc you're gonna find chicken licking you're gonna find debonairs that's what you're gonna find you know you're not gonna find fruits and veggies you're not gonna find fruit and veggies store you're not gonna find none of that in the cases you're gonna find deep fried stuff so that you can get you can get high blood pressure you understand blood disease okay heart attack all of that that's by design. It's not an accident. That's how they dealt wisely with us. Read on. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. To serve with rigor, meaning what? They were wearing us out. They were overworking us. Read on. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. All their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. So you see that thing? They were oppressing us with hard bondage. They didn't give a damn about us. But the rest of the Israelites that was supervisors and all of that, they lived good. Every life was good. They are the main ones that was complaining. You understand? That's why today when we go to the seats and teach, the main people, the main brother, the main ones that come against us is bourgeoisie, bourgeoisie Negroes who don't think they are they are enslaved. Because we, I meet a lot of them when they will tell you, no, no, we are not, I'm not in slavery. We're not slaves. You understand? We were liberated in 1994. The delusion of the delusion of freedom. That's what that's when 1994 happened. That was the delusion of freedom. You understand? And our sisters, they don't believe that we are enslaved. They don't believe that. Many of them, not all of them. But many of our sisters don't believe that. Okay, now watch this. Go back to Judith now. Judith chapter 5, read verse 11 one more again. The book of Judith, chapter 5, verse 11. Go ahead. Therefore, the king of Egypt rose up against them and dealt subtlety with them and brought them low with laboring in brick and made them slaves. Read. Then they cried unto their God. And he smote all the land of Egypt with incurable plagues. So the Egyptians cast them out of their sight. Okay, all praises to the Lord. So, Judith chapter 5, read verse 12, one more again. Judith chapter 5, verse 12. Read. Then they cried unto their God, and he smote all the land of Egypt with incurable plagues. So the Egyptians cast them out of their sight. You see that thing? So now, when, when we cried unto the Most High God, he killed the Egyptians. He destroyed them. That's, that's when the Exodus happened. Now watch this. Give me the book of... Give me Exodus chapter 3, verse 7. Okay, Exodus 3, verse 7. It says, and they cried unto their God. You see that part right there? They cried unto their God. When we cry unto the Most High God, that's when the Lord will raise up leaders. But when we cry to the government, the Lord is not going to raise leaders unto us. You understand? Because the majority of the political parties, they are not pushing the deep. They are not pushing deliverance for the black man. They are, not, they are not pushing freedom for the black man and the black woman. They are pushing deliverance for everybody. Multiracial nonsense. Okay? Exodus 3 verse 7. Read. Exodus chapter 3 verse 7. Go ahead. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and mm. have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. You see what the Lord is saying? The most high God is saying, listen, I'm, I, see the, I see the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and I've heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. The Lord says, listen, they are crying unto me because they are being oppressed. As long as we're still living comfortably in this land, the most high God is not going to deliver us yet. So things have to get so bad that now we will definitely cry unto the Lord. Because many of our people, they are too relaxed. Things are comfortable. They are having good jobs. They are getting paid well. You understand? They don't give a damn about their nation. So now things have to get so bad that now they're going to look for the prophets. They're going to seek the understanding of this book. That's when the most High God will say, okay, now it's time to deliver my children. Okay. But as long as our people are still crying to the government, 
they, they are not afflicted yet. Things are not bad yet. Things have to get much worse for the people to cry unto the Lord. Understand that. Not Cyril Ramaphos. Okay. Read that thing again, verse 7. Exodus chapter 3, verse 7. Go ahead. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt mm -hmm. and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. He says, before I know their sorrows. So what did the Lord do? Give me 2nd Esdras chapter 1. 2nd Esdras chapter 1 verse 13. Here's what the Lord did when we cried unto him. When we're in slavery under the Egyptians, when we're saving heart bondage, this is what the Lord did when we cried unto him. Watch this. Now read what you got. Second Esdras chapter 1, verse 13 in the Apocrypha. Okay, read that. Second Esdras chapter 1, verse 13. Mm -hmm. I led you through the sea, and in the beginning, and the beginning gave you a large and safe passage. I gave you Moses for your leader, and Aaron for what? your priest. I gave you Moses for your leader. I gave you Moses for a leader. You see what happens when we cry unto the Lord? When we cry unto the Lord, the Lord says, okay, I'm going to give, I'm going to raise up a leader myself. The Lord says he's going to do it. He's going to raise up a leader. You understand? Who's going to deliver the people out of oppression. That's what the Lord is doing with you brothers. You brothers, each and every one of you that are in here, you have, they are destined to become leaders. You understand? But you must be groomed. You must be taught. You must humble down to what this Bible says. You must follow instruction. You must not be giving lip. You must not be giving, say, oh, who are you going to tell me what to do? Shut the hell up and sit in some corner somewhere. Because we're building a nation here. You understand? We are the only nation that hate law and order, but we want to be delivered from oppression. You cannot, you cannot make this stuff up. Now read that thing again, verse 13. Read. Second Ezra chapter 1, verse 13. Read. I led you through the sea and in the beginning gave you a large and safe passage. Wait. I gave you Moses for a leader and Aaron for a priest. Now watch this. Give me that in Numbers 12 verse 3. Numbers chapter 12 verse 3. Because the type of leaders that the Lord is raising up, these are the type of characteristics they must have. Okay? Read that. Numbers 12 verse 3. Okay, come on. Numbers chapter 12 verse 3. Read. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. You see the type of Moses, the type of man Moses was, is as Moses was, a, was very meek, meaning he was very humble. Humble, it doesn't mean, um, meek means humble. Humble doesn't mean that you talk like Joel Osteen, you talk like, like T.D. Jakes. Mm -mm. Humble means you're going to do what the Bible says. That's what it means to be humble. Humble means that you do what the Bible says. The Bible says thou shalt not. The Bible says thou shalt not. You say, okay, I'm going to do this thing. The Bible says what? Okay, we're rolling. I'm going to do it. I'm not going to give excuses. That's what it means to be meek. Okay? Now watch this. Give me the book of Sirach 45 verse 1. Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 45 verse 1. Sirach 45 and verse 1. Let's read that. Ecclesiasticus chapter 45, verse 1. Read. And he brought out of him a merciful man, which found favor in the sight of all flesh, even Moses, beloved mm -hmm. of God and man, whose memorial is blessed. You see that thing? So out of Jacob, the Lord raised up Moses, a merciful man. He says he was beloved of God because he was meek. He says Moses was the meekest man on earth. The meekest man on earth during that time. That's letting you know the type of man Moses was. Okay? It says, whose memorial is blessed. Go ahead. He made him like to the glorious saints. Mm -hmm. And magnified him. So that his enemies stood in fear of him. His enemies is talking about who? The Egyptians that was oppressing us. And our people that hated what Moses stood for. You understand? Go ahead. By his words, he caused the wonders to cease. Mm -hmm. And he made him glorious in the sight of kings and gave him a commandment for his people. He gave him what? He gave him 
a commandment for his people. No, he gave him the freedom charter. What did he give him? He gave him a commandment for his people. No, he gave him the manifesto, the EFF manifesto. What did the Lord give to Moses? Gave him a commandment for his people. You see that thing right there? He gave Moses a commandment for his people. That's the type of leaders that the Lord is raising up. The Lord is not raising up men that are going to be pushing politics and all that. Democrats. Mm -mm. The Lord is raising up men in these last days that will do what? That will keep the commandments and teach the commandments of the Lord to the people. You understand? Go ahead. And showed him part of his glory. Because Moses saw the heavenly father's backside. Go ahead. Verse 4. Read. He sanctified him in his faithfulness and meekness. Mm -hmm. He chose him out of all men. He chose him out of all men during that time. Go ahead. He made him to hear his voice and brought him into the dark cloud and gave mm -hmm. him commandments before his, before his face. Even the law of life and knowledge that he might teach Jacob his covenants and Israel his judgments. You see what we're supposed to teach the people? We teach the people the law of life and knowledge. That he might teach Jacob his covenant, meaning his laws of the old and new, and Israel his judgment. So that we can make just judgments before the Lord returns. We can know the difference between right and wrong. You understand? Because we have the laws of God with us. We're going to be able to know right from wrong. Because right now, because our people don't have law and order, they reject the Bible, they hate it. That's why the community is filled with so much evil. We've got a lot of black Negroes that are terrorizing the community. Sisters killing our babies through abortion. You understand? We have a lot of evil happening in the black community because why? The laws of God are not being taught to the people. Broken family structures. Why? Because God's laws are not being taught. Marriage is not being taught to the black man. Marriage is not being taught to the black woman. Our daughters are not being taught by their fathers. Sons are not having the, sons do not have the right example from the black man. The black man is taking his pants, smoking weed, sleeping around, popping babies. He doesn't want to take care of them. That's the state of the nation today. We need the laws of God to clean up this mess. That's why I need you men to pay close attention. We are at war out here. Read again, verse 5. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 45, verse 5. Read. He made him to hear his voice and brought mm. him into the dark cloud and gave him commandments before his face, even the law of life and knowledge, that he might teach Jacob his covenants and Israel his judgments. So now watch this. Let's go back now. Go back to Deuteronomy 28, verse 68, because that's where we were. I hope you black, you brothers were paying attention. That's where we, that's the, the reason why we came all to this place is for you to understand, it says the Lord will bring you into Egypt again. Because the first time when we went into Egypt, that's when there was a famine in Canaan. We, we went down into Egypt with our forefather Jacob. You understand? Joseph died. A new king rose in, in Egypt. You understand? Amos the first. Then later on in the, the next dynasty, the 19th dynasty, Ramses the second was risen up. And we were even more oppressed until we cried unto the Lord and the Most High God raised up Moses for a leader. And the lead, that leader that the Lord rose up, he was meek. He humbled down to what this Bible said. That's the type of leaders that the Lord will raise up in these last days. He did it back then. He will do it today in these last days. Before the world goes, boom! The Most High will surely do it. And that's what you are seeing this day. Now, Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. We were to go. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now, you see that part right there? The Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Because the first time when we went, we went over all these precepts to explain when we first came into Egypt. Now the Lord says, I'm going to bring you into Egypt again. Because what were we in Egypt? We were slaves in Egypt. You understand? We were slaves in Egypt. Now read that verse again. Watch this. Now we're going to do it. We're going to do a time jump in history. We went, we did a time jump backwards in history. Now we're going to do a time jump forwards in history, which is where we are now, 2022. Now read that thing again. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. 
you by the that way, the, well, the Lord is going to hold on. The Lord is going to bring you into slavery again. Get that in Exodus 20, verse 2. Just to emphasize, we read it in Judith, okay, chapter 5, verse 11, but let's read this again so we understand what Egypt means. Because we read the, the shortcut when we're on the street, we read this in Exodus 20, okay? But what we went over is the history behind it, so you understand you have some context, okay? Read that. Exodus 20. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. Read. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You see that thing, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, which we were made slaves, according to Judith 5, verse 11, out of the house of bondage. So Egypt means bondage, okay? Egypt is a Greek word to means restrictions, Egyptos, restrictions, okay? The land of bond men. Now, go back to Deuteronomy 28, verse 68, once again, okay? Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With what? With ships. With ships, cargo slave ships. You understand? That goes into the sub sahara slave trade. That goes into the transatlantic slave trade. That goes into the Silk Road slave trade. When we're sold by, by the Arabs and the Hamites into China and India. You understand? During the 1600s, that's when we were sold by the Hamites and the, Ara and the Arabs to North, Central, and South America. You understand? The sub-Sahara slave trade, the Arabs was involved. You understand? The Hamites was involved. The Portuguese was involved because there was slavery taking place in South Africa. You understand? During the time of, in the 1400s, by the Portuguese, Vasco da Gama, Bartholomew Diaz, Gomez, you understand? They were all participating in what? Slave trade. They were not here for refreshments, like they taught us in high school. They were not here for spices, like they taught us in high school. They were here for slaves, land, and resources upon the land. Understand that? You understand? Okay. Now, keep going. Go ahead. By the way, well, if I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Mm -hmm. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for born men and born women, and no man shall buy you. So now we're gonna be sold, we're gonna be sold, he says, and thou shalt see it more, no more again. And there, once we get off these slave ships, we're gonna be sold to our enemies for born men, meaning slave men, and born women, slave women, and no man shall buy you. Meaning no man is going to redeem you from the conditions that you're in. Is gonna take is gonna take the messiah to raise up leaders to deliver you. Understand that thing. Now watch this. Give me the book of Luke 21, verse 20. Okay, because Christ prophesied about this thing, he was quoting Moses. Watch this. Luke 21, because what we just read in Deuteronomy 28, verse 68, these are the, 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 the that's the atrocities that happen now in these last days, the 1600s, the 1400s. You understand. Now watch this. Christ is prophesying about that. Watch this. Luke 21 verse 20. Let's read that. Luke chapter 21 verse 20. Read. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, mm -hmm. then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Read that again. Luke chapter 21 verse 20. And when mm -hmm. ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Is that when you see Jerusalem surrounded by the Roman armies, is that then you must know that the destruction of Jerusalem is at hand. That's what Christ, Christ is telling us what's going to take place. Because we're still under Roman rule at this point. You understand? This hadn't taken place yet. So he's prophesying what's going to take place. Okay, go ahead. Then let them which are in Judea Flee to the mountains. Stop right there. He says, then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. He says, our forefathers that was in Judea. Remember where Judea was? That was in the south of Israel. That's Judea. He says, let those that are in Judea flee to the mountains, meaning you must run. Flee means run. He didn't say walk. He says, run to the mountains. What are those mountains? 
Let's get that in um, Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. It says, let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Okay. Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. Let's read that. Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. Go ahead. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt. And, and be thou there, and flee Hold into on. Egypt. And, and flee, and flee, and flee, meaning run. Run into Egypt. The mountains in Matthew 2, verse 13, the mountains in Luke 21, verse, 20, verse 21, is there is Egypt in Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. Just that Luke is not telling you what the mountains are, but Matthew explains it. The mountains is Egypt. He says, run into Egypt and hide yourself. Now, you must ask yourself, why would Christ say stuff, something like that? Why would he say, run into Egypt and go there and hide? Because think about it. Did we just run into Egypt? Because remember, Egypt is primary, because Egypt is in the continent, because Jerusalem was also in the, on the continent of Africa. It's always been there. It's just that in 1859, when they constructed the Suez Canal, they separated the land of Israel from the rest of the continent. You understand? But Egypt, but Jerusalem has always been part of this continent. Always. You understand? So now, why would Christ say, run into Egypt? Because remember now, when Joseph and Mary was, when, 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 when Joseph and Mary had Christ, that's the same thing that was told to Joseph, go into Egypt and hide because Herod is going to kill the baby Christ when Christ was still a child, right? Read verse 13 again. I'm going to show you something this day. Pay attention. Read. Matthew chapter 2 verse 13. Mm -hmm. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, mm. and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt. And be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. You see that thing? So what we're reading here is, so Christ is telling us, he said, listen, when you see Jerusalem about to be destroyed, you must know that, listen, this is what you need to do when the destruction comes upon you. You need to run deeper into the continent of Africa because we were already in the continent. You understand? So why? Because during the time when he was a child, his mother and his father were also told the same thing by the angel to say, listen, go run deeper into, into the continent of Africa and hide yourself because Herod is going to seek the young child to destroy him, meaning to kill him. Now watch this. So think about it. Did we just run deeper into the continent? and started looking for, um, you know, random houses to hide ourselves in. Think about it. Did we do that? Because you might think we did that. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah. Okay, give me the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 1. Isaiah 30 verse 1. 30, I mean, Isaiah 31 verse 1. I'm going to show you something this day. Isaiah chapter 31, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Watch with them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. So now you must understand, during the time, because Isaiah walked during the time of uh, the Assyrians, you understand? during the time of King Hezekiah. So guess what? Who came against Israel during that time? It was um, the Assyrians, they came against Israel. They came against Northern Kingdom. You understand? The Northern Kingdom of Israel. So what's going on here is during this time, guess what was going on? Our forefathers went down into Egypt for help. Some of them, they stayed there. They remained there in Egypt. You understand? During the time of the Assyrians. During the time when Nebuchadnezzar rose up against us, our forefathers, what did they do? They also went down into Egypt, you understand, for help. So they, 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 already, they, were, they already had families down there. We already had family. So during the time when we mingled with these nations, we stayed among them. 
So when, 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 when the angels sent Joseph and Mary to go down into Egypt, they were not going to random strangers. They were going to family members that was there already many, many years before. You brothers and sisters understand that, right? Yes, sir. Okay. All praises to the Lord. Now, go back to Matthew 2. Read verse, um, go, no, go back to Luke 21. Read verse 21 once again. Luke chapter 21, verse 21. Mm -hmm. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein to it. You see that thing? It says, there, it says, flee to the mountain, meaning run deeper into the continent. Let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Meaning those that are in the midst of Jerusalem, they must depart. They must leave. Because destruction cometh nigh. Okay? Let not them that are in the countries enter there in two. Meaning they must not come back here. They must stay there. Okay? Read, jump down to verse 24 now. No, no, read verse 22. Read on. For these be the days of vengeance, that mm -hmm. all things which are written may be fulfilled. So the days of vengeance, that the things that are written may be fulfilled, is the things that are written in Deuteronomy 28. Verse 15 through 68. All of the things that Moses said, they must come to pass. That's what Christ is telling us, right? Jump down to verse 24 now. Come on. Luke chapter 21, verse 24. Mm -hmm. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. And they shall, shall be fall by the edge of the sword. Meaning our forefathers will fall by the edge of the sword because there are those of our forefathers that remained. They did not obey the prophecy that Christ said. So they stood up to fight against Rome. And many of them, they were put to death by the edge of the sword. The Romans killed many of them. They slaughtered them. You understand? They said the blood was the blood was, was going into the streams of the rivers. That's how many of our forefathers and foremothers they killed. You understand? And the children. It was a bloodbath. Okay, go ahead. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. You see that part right there? And shall be led away captive into all nations. So that's the same thing we read. You understand? That we're going to go into slavery again. But this time, we're going to go on cargo slave ships. What we're reading here in Luke 21 verse 24 is called forced migration. That's why it says, let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. That's forced migration. We were forced out of our homeland. You understand? Go ahead. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. You see, I think Jerusalem will be trodden down of the Gentiles. What is Christ telling us? Christ is letting us know that Jerusalem is going to be inhabited by the people that don't belong there. The Gentiles, meaning the other nations. So who's occupying the land of Israel today? Is the Palestinians and white people calling themselves Jewish. They were put in that land in 1948. The Arabs have been there since from the time of where, when they conquered Constantinople, our city of Byzantine in 1453, working together with Esau, you understand? So they've been in that land from that long, the 1800s. So now they think that land belongs to them. It doesn't belong to them, you understand? So white people, when they join, join the Arabs over there, now Jewish people are fighting the Arabs and the Palestinians. They are pushing them further, further. You understand? That's why there's conflict in that land. Who does the land belong to? And who are the owners of the land? That's us. Where do we stay in the Cassis, calling ourselves Bantus and Negroes? That's what the Lord is telling us. He says, Jerusalem will be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Meaning until the time of their rulership is over. You understand? That's what the Lord is saying to us right here. Okay? Now watch this. Now, I'm going to deal with that part when it says, and, and shall be led away captive into all nations. Now, watch this. Give me the book of Zephaniah 3, verse 10. Zephaniah, chapter 3 and verse 10. We shall be led away captive into all nations. Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 10. We what you got. Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 10. Mm -hmm. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, 
even the thoughts of my disperse shall bring mine offering. So our prophet Zephaniah is prophesying, he said, listen, beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my supplies, even the daughter of my dispersed, meaning the scattered Israelites, the diaspora, that's what they call him in the history, the scattered Israelite, the diaspora, he says, shall bring mine offering beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. Now watch this. Okay, pay close attention. All right. Okay, I need you to read this. Okay. I need you to look at this. Look at this. Let's look at this. Let's look at this right here. Now read this. Yes, sir. Reading from Quora.com. The land mm -hmm. which is known as beyond the rivers of Ethiopia is actually a number of countries that Western scholars call them Sub-Saharan Africa, as you can see in the mm -hmm. map below. So now beyond the rivers of Ethiopia refers to the Sub-Saharan Sub Africa. Now watch this. We're coming back. Now I want you to read this. This is the Library of Congress. The Library of Congress. Now I want you list of sub-Saharan African countries. You're not gonna read the whole thing, but I just want you to read some of the the, the countries listed here. Okay, read. Yes, sir. Reading from Library of Congress, list of sub-Saharan African countries. Angola. Mm -hmm. Read that. Mm. Botswana, Burkina Faso, Burundi, Cameroon. Cape Verde, Central African Republic, Chad, That's Morris, the Congo. Mm -hmm. Congo Brazzaville, Read on. Mm. Congo Democratic Republic. Okay, read there. Cote d'Ivoire. Cote d'Ivoire. Cote d'Ivoire, Djibouti. Okay. Now Djibouti. I want you to jump over. Okay. Now read Ethiopia. Ethiopia. Mm-hmm, right, read that. Kenya. Mm-hmm. Lesotho. Madagascar. Madagascar, okay, which was conquered by the French. Okay, go ahead. Malawi. Which was conquered by the British. Okay, read that. Nigeria. Mm-hmm, Nigeria, the, the British as well. And the, because in Nigeria, they also speak French as well. Okay, now read that. Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone. Okay, now read that one right there. South Africa. South Africa. So all these countries that you see here, they are part of the Sub-Saharan Africa, right? Now let's go back. Now I want you to look at this map right here. What Zephaniah is talking about, you see this that they are showing here? This right here is what? beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, because this is Ethiopia right here. Djibouti is right here, where China has built a military base here, okay? Now, let's look at the, the rivers here, okay? Read that. Benue River. Benue River, read that. That's the White, White Nile. Nile. Mm -hmm. Blue Nile River. The Blue Nile. Okay, read that. Congo River. The Congo River, read. Lake Victoria. Uh huh. Lake, Lake Tanganyika. Tanganyika. Uh huh. Lake Nyasa. Mm hmm. Zambezi River. Mm, go ahead. Limpopo River. Limpopo River. Okay, go ahead. Orange River. So now, when it says beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, it's talking about the sub-Saharan African countries. You understand? So now, what Zephaniah is talking about, what is Zephaniah letting us know? Zephaniah is letting you know that where the, the, where the diaspora, the, the majority of their diaspora is letting you know where they are scattered. He's not saying they are not in Senegal. You understand? He's not saying that because Cape Verde is somewhere here, Cape Verde and so forth. He's not saying they are not up there as well, but we're just dealing with the sub-Sahara Africa. 
You understand? So he's letting you know where the Israel, Israelites would be in the last days beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. So when we say, because remember, this is the Suez Canal, right? Which was constructed in 1859. This is the land of Israel. Okay? So now, watch this. Remember when Christ says, he says, flee to the mountain. He says, run deeper into the continent of Africa. Yes, we did run deeper, but we, we dispersed. You see, we, we started to scatter ourselves around. We started to mingle with the inhabitants of the land. I need you brothers to understand that thing. Okay, read Zephaniah 3 verse 10 again. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 10. Go ahead. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my sapiens, even the daughter of my dispersed shall bring mine offering. Jump down to verse 13 now, come on. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 13. Mm -hmm. The remnant of Israel shall not do the what? The remnant of Israel. The remnant of Israel. The rem hold on. The remnant of Israel is the daughter of my dispersed in verse 10. When it says, Beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, even the daughter of my dispersed shall bring mine offering. With the daughter of the laws dispersed is the remnant of Israel in verse 13, which is what in the sub Saharan African countries. Read verse 13 again. One more again. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 13. Mm -hmm. The remnant of Israel shall not do iniquity. Mm -hmm. Nor speak lies. Neither shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. For they shall feed and lie down and none shall make them afraid. Because what, the, what would the Lord do? The Lord will raise up leaders beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. The Lord is going to raise up prophets beyond the, of, the rivers of Ethiopia. And guess what the people will do? The people will repent. That's why they will not do iniquity. That's why they will not speak lies. That's why there will not be a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth. Because they're going to what? They're going to feed on the laws of God. They're going to study to prepare themselves for the second coming of the Messiah. That's what we're doing right now. You understand? We're fulfilling the prophecy of Zephaniah 3 verse 10 and verse 13 based on what Christ said in Luke 21, 24. Okay, now watch this. Give me Psalms 106 verse 35. Because when we, when we came, when we ran deeper into the continent, when because we were forced to migrate by the Roman armies, you understand? Titus, Titus and Vespasian. General Titus and Vespasian, because they are the ones that, that destroyed the city of Jerusalem in 70 AD. You understand? Vespasian and his son Titus, they are the ones that destroyed Jerusalem in 70 AD and were scattered all over beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. You understand? And that's 70 AD, right? 1600 years later, guess what happened? Let me show you something. I'm going to show you something right here. Okay, watch this. So remember, 70 AD, the temple of Jerusalem is destroyed, like we read in Luke 21 24. Then Jerusalem is what? Jerusalem will be will be um, inhabited by foreigners, meaning the Palestinians and white people calling themselves Jewish. We are over here. We are, we are dispersed on the continent, right? Then you see, many of our forefathers, they came with us, the West Coast and all that, the Congo, okay, Guinea and so forth. So in the 1600s, guess what happened? The transatlantic slave trade took place. Our forefathers and foremothers were taken from the west coast of Africa to North, Central, and South America, which is on this side. You understand? Vasco da Gama and his crew, they came down here to take slaves from Angola and all that, and they enslaved the people here in South Africa as well. You understand? Some of them, they took them to Madagascar. Some of them, they took them to Mozambique, Mauritius, okay? So what you're seeing here, the slavery that was taking place here on the continent was based on what happened in 70 AD. You men understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, all praises. Now, give me Psalms 106 verse 35. Psalms 106 verse 35. Psalm chapter 106 verse 35. Read. But were mingled among the heathen and lent their works. So when we arrived, 
into the deeper into the continent, we started to mingle among the Hamites that we found on this land. We started to mix ourselves with them. That's why it says they were mingled among the heathen and learn their works. We started to practice their customs. We started to follow their traditions and so forth. Read. And they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. We started to worship their idols. You understand? And we started to teach our children to do the same thing. Jump down to verse 38. Go ahead. Psalm chapter 106, verse 38. Mm -hmm. and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan, and the mm -hmm. land was polluted with blood. You see that thing? So what's happening here is the Lord is saying, when we would run, when we were scattered, we started to learn the customs of the people that we were scattered amongst, because we, were, we, are, we are living among our enemies, by the way. Don't get it twisted. We are living among our enemies. You understand? And our enemies, they forced us to learn their culture, their language. You understand? And everything that they did, we did it as well. We taught our children. So generations later, we have forgotten who we are. We call ourselves by the names of the people that enslaved us. We speak their language and so forth. That's why it's time to repent. Okay? Now watch this. Now, now that we are in the lens of our captivities, right? We don't know who we are. We don't remember nothing about ourselves. Here's what our forefather Jacob said before he died. What would happen to us in the last days? Give me Genesis 49 verse 1. Genesis chapter 49 verse 1. I'm taking you through history. So pay attention. Genesis 49 verse 1. Read that. Genesis chapter 49 verse 1. Go ahead. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that we shall befall you in the last days. So our forefather Jacob is letting us know, I said, listen, gather yourself together, you you're my children. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen to you in the last days. You see that? But he's prophesying. He says, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen to you in the last days. So the last days, that includes beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, what Zephaniah was prophesying about. You understand? What Moses prophesied about in Deuteronomy 28 that we are going to be transported all over the earth by the way of slave ships. That's what, that's what our forefather Jacob is saying here. So Moses is recording the history that he did not live in. That's what we're reading here, okay? Jump down to verse eight, because what our forefather Jacob is doing here is telling us what's gonna happen to each tribe, where they are going to be, what they are going to become, and how they're gonna wake up in those lands of their slavery. You understand? So he's, 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 he's prophesying what's going to happen to each tribe and where they are going to be scattered. So what is he giving us? He's giving us a map of where the tribes will be in the last days. Understand what's going on here. Read verse 8. Okay, come on. Genesis chapter 49 verse 8. Read. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Read. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy mm -hmm. father's children shall bow down before thee. So now he's talking about the tribe of Judah, which is the so-called Bantus and Negroes of today. He says, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Who's Judah's brethren? The rest of the tribes. How is the brethren, how is the rest of the tribes going to do what? How is the rest of the tribes going to praise Judah? Watch this. Hold this. Get Zechariah 12 and 7. Zechariah. Let's look at the prophecy. Let's see what Zechariah says about what will happen to the tribe of Judah in the last days. Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 7. Read that. Zechariah chapter 12 verse 7. Mm -hmm. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. Read. That the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. You see that Zechariah is prophesying what's going to happen to the tribe of Judah. He says, in the last days, he's going to save the tents of Judah first, meaning Judah will be the first tribe that is going to be raised up in the last days. Once Judah rises up, once the Lord put the spirit, his spirit in, the, in, the, in, in Judah, this is what Judah will do. Watch this. Get that in Deuteronomy 33, verse 7. Here's what Judah will do when Judah wakes up. Okay? Watch this. 
Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 7. Go ahead. And this is the blessing of Judah. And the said, blessing of Judah. The blessing of Judah. Go ahead. And he said, Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah. The what of Judah? The voice of Judah. The voice of Judah. The voice of Judah. The voice of Judah. Because people will hear Judah prophesy. People will see Judah moving. People will see Judah waking up and doing something to reclaim his identity. Pay attention to the words I'm using. The Lord will activate Judah. And the first thing that Judah will do, Judah will seek identity first and foremost. Read that thing again. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 7. Mm -hmm. And this is the blessing of Judah. And he said, Pray. Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah. Come on. And bring him unto his people. Stop right there. It says, the voice of Judah. Judah will be to the, will go to the streets. Judah will go to the streets. The voice of Judah is the laws of God, the Bible. It says, and bring him unto his people. Meaning what? Judah will know where the rest of the tribes are scattered. That's what the Lord is saying here. The blessing that the Lord will put upon Judah is Judah will have the, the understanding to know where to go in the Bible, how to put the pieces of the Bible together and use history to be able to know where the tribes are. Judah will know how to do that. The Lord will put the spirit on Judah to do that thing. That's what Moses is telling us right here. Okay, go ahead. Let his hands be sufficient for him and, mm -hmm. be, thou, and be thou and help to him from his enemies. You see that thing? Judah is going to be an help to the rest of the tribes. Judah will be a blessing to the rest of the tribes because the Lord will put the spirit on Judah to rise up, to raise up the rest of the tribes. Judah will teach the tribes. Judah will know where the tribes are scattered. Okay? Now go back to Genesis 49 verse 8 once again. Genesis chapter 49 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Judah Thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Read. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Go ahead. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Now watch this. Judah, the Lord will put the spirit on Judah to wake up. But before Judah can actually pick up the Bible to go and teach, the first thing that the Lord will do for Judah is Judah will seek identity. You understand? Now watch this. Give me Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel chapter 37, we're going to read verse 1. Okay, Ezekiel 37 verse 1. Watch this. Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 1. Read. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out mm -hmm. in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in Ray. the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. So now Ezekiel... If the Lord is showing Ezekiel a valley that is full of bones, meaning what? Bones. There's no meat, there's no nothing, it's just bones. Okay, go ahead. And caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, mm -hmm. there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. So now Ezekiel is seeing these bones that are in the open valley, meaning in the land of our captivity. He says, and lo, they were very dry. So why, what is he talking about when he says, he's seeing the bones? He says, the bones are very dry. Now watch this. Keep going. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, mm. oh Lord God, thou knowest. So now, the Lord is asking Ezekiel, he said, listen, can these bones live? Ezekiel is looking at this because the, these bones represents Israel. These bones represent Israel in the lands of their captivity. Now Ezekiel is looking at the condition of the nation of Israel. Then the Lord is asking him, he said, listen, can these people actually recover from this? Can these people be brought back into their order, into their glory to be rulers of the earth? Ezekiel is like, hmm. Lord, you know, only you know if this can be possible, if these, these people can be woken up. Because he's looking at the state of the nation, he's like, oof, mm -mm. only you know, I don't want to answer, you know. Go ahead. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. 
You see what it's saying? It says, prophesy unto these bones. It says, hear ye the, hear ye, hear the word of the Lord. Go ahead, watch this. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. He says, I'm going to cause breath to enter into you, you Israelites, and you shall live. Because guess what? We would be spiritually dead in the lands of our captivity. That's why it says, prophesy unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. What is the breath? The laws of God. That's the breath of life. God's commandments. Now watch this. Go ahead. And I will lay sinews upon you and will bring up mm -hmm. flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and ye shall live and ye shall is know there, that, that I am the Lord. Hold on. It says, I will lay sinews upon you. That goes into what? Ligaments and muscles and tendons. It says, I will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin. Now, the, it says, these, the words that you're going to teach them is going to bring these bones together. You're going to have you're going to have muscle, you're going to have tendons. Then not only that, I'm going to put flesh upon you and I will cover you with skin. You understand? Skin goes into an identity. So Israel waking up will start with them seeking identity in the last days. Go ahead. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 6. And I will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin, and put breath yeah. in you, and ye shall live. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Yeah. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his bone. He says, I taught, you understand? When he says, I prophesied, meaning I taught as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking. The bones came together, bone to his bone. Israel is coming, is waking up. Meaning what? Israel will start to seek identity. This goes into what the turbulent 60s, that's what they call it in the history. The turbulent 60s, meaning in the 60s, that's what that is what was going on. The black man was rising up. The black man was was pushing, was was starting movements, black consciousness movement. You understand? Um, the, P, the you know PAC Pan Africanist Congress. You understand? These are the these these were movements that was rising up. Black consciousness movement, there was Steve Biko and all that. That is what was going on during this time, because we were being oppressed. But during the sixties, that's when the Lord started to activate our forefathers to start to seek identity. So what we're reading in Ezekiel thirty-seven is years. You understand? It's not something that is just happening one day after another. Mm -mm. You understand? Go ahead. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and mm -hmm. the skin covered them above, right. but there was no breath in them. That part right there. That part right there. It says, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Because when they rose up during the 60s, they were, not keep, they were not teaching the commandments of the Lord. They were seeking identity. Hence why they started political movements. You understand? They started these uh, anti-apartheid movements and activists and organizations to do what? To rally together the people together to teach them what? To go against the fight the power. You understand? Fight the power. Speak truth to power and so forth. That's what they was doing. Okay? That's why he says, but there was no breath in them. Although they were seeking identity, there was no breath. They did not use the Bible to do so. They were not keeping nor teaching the commandments. You understand? Now watch this. Hmm. I'm going to show you something this day. Okay. Go back to Genesis. Go back to Genesis chapter 49. Read verse 8 once again. Genesis chapter 49 verse 8. Read. Read. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Mm -hmm. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Stop thy right father's there. children. Thy, hold on. It says, thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. So Judah will be the one that the brethren will praise. Because why? 
Because during the time of the 60s, who was rising up? The black man, the black woman behind, 100% behind the black man, supporting the black man. You understand? To do what? To fight against the apartheid, you understand, regime. To fight apartheid and oppression, discrimination and hatred, and the killing of our sons and our daughters, fathers and mothers. You understand? It says, thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies, because Judah will be the one that will take the enemy head off. Judah will be the one that will go and what? And fight with the enemy. Judah will do that. Because during that time, there were a lot of political leaders that rose up. A lot of activists that rose up to fight against the apartheid government. That's what, that's what it says here. It says, thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. I'm going to show you this. Give me the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 13. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 13. Watch this. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemy. Okay, watch this. Read that for me. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 13. Rain. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people, even mm -hmm. for salvation with thine anointing. Rain. Thou woundest the head out of the house of the wicked by yes, discovery. So when Christ will return, he's going to wound the head out of the house of the wicked. The head of the house of the wicked is talking about the white man, okay? He's the head of the house of the wicked, the house of evil, the house of Satan. Okay, go ahead. The wound is the head out of the house of the wicked by mm -hmm. discovering the foundation unto the neck, Selah. You see that thing? So the neck, this neck right here is talking about who? It's talking about the head and the neck of the head of the heathen. Who's the head of the heathen? The white man, he's the head of all the heathens that are upon this earth. You understand? He's the head. He tells them how to oppress us. He tells them what to do and what to use to oppress the 12 tribes of Israel. He's the one that gives command. He controls them all. He's the head of the rulers of the heathens. He is the head. You understand? So now, what, Judah, what was Judah doing? Judah would fight with the head of the heathen. Who was oppressing us on this side of the earth? The Boris, the Dutch, the British, the Portuguese. You understand? They were the ones that was doing that. Okay, now watch this. Give me that book. Give me Deuteronomy 28, verse 49. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 49. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 49. Read. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, mm -hmm. from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flies, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. So the Lord is saying, listen, as part of, as part of the judgment, he says, I'm going to raise a nation against you from far. Who's that nation? He talk about the Portuguese, the Dutch, because the Dutch arrived here in 1652. But before them, who arrived here? Bartholomew Diaz. Vasco da Gama, Gomez. When did they arrive? In the 1400s. Before Jan van Riedek arrived here. Before the Dutch arrived here. The Vok. You understand? So they, they came earlier. In 1488. You understand? 1444 and so forth. They arrived on this side of the earth. The Portuguese. 1652, the Dutch arrived here. 1820, the British arrived here. You understand? And they were all working together to oppress the black man and the black woman. So guess what? He said, read that again, verse 49. Because when it says, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise, thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. We're going to be specific, particularly about South Africa. We're going to be specific. The main enemy that Judah was fighting on this side of the earth, we're going to pinpoint the demon. Read it, verse 49. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 49. Read. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, mm -hmm. from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flies. Read. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. A nation whose tongue we will not understand. Remember, remember the, what was the symbol of, the, 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 of Spain? What was the symbol of, of the Portuguese, which is the Spaniards? The eagle. What was the symbol of the Dutch? The eagle. What was the symbol of the, of the, British, the British? The eagle. That's them right there. It says, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. 
They were speaking Portuguese. They were speaking Africans. They were speaking English. You understand? That's why here in South Africa, we speak English and we speak Africans too. You understand? Our brothers in um, in South uh, in Southeast Africa, which is Mozambique, what do they speak? They speak Portuguese. Who conquered them? The Portuguese. Understand that, okay? Our brothers in Angola, they speak Portuguese as well. Who conquered them? The Portuguese. Vasco da Gama and his friends. Okay? Keep reading. Go ahead. A nation of fierce countenance mm -hmm. who shall not regard the person of the old nor Wait. show favor to the young. Meaning what? They're not going to care about the older people. They're not going to care about the children as well. They are going to oppress everybody. Meaning they don't give a damn. Go ahead. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle. He shall do fruit. what? He shall eat the fruit of thy cattle. No, they were here for refreshments because, you know, you understand? They were tired and all that. He shall do what? He shall eat the fruit of thy cattle. He shall eat the fruit of thy cattle. Because when they arrived here, they took our livestock. They took our cattle, our sheep, our goat. You understand? Our mules, our donkeys and all that. Because we use those. Those are our resources. Those are, that was our wealth. Okay? So if you've got livestock, it means you have land. Understand that. Go ahead. And the fruit of thy land. And the fruit of thy land. That, go, that goes into the minerals. The gold, the platinum, the diamond. You understand? So you've got cattle, that means you've got land. You've got land, you've got resources on the ground, which they knew about. Read. Until thou be destroyed. Until we are destroyed, until we are impoverished, kicked out of our houses, our land taken from us, our livestock taken from us, you understand? And our children enslaved. Go ahead. Which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, mm. or oil, or the increase of thy kind, or flocks of thy sheep. Until Great. he destroyed thee. You see that thing right there? So, no, no, listen. He will take the fruit of our cattle. He will take the fruit of our land and the land too. Until we are destroyed, we are impoverished. It says, which also shall not leave thee either corn. That's why they own farms now. Wine, because we own wine farms. Oil. We own oil farms. Meaning what? We planted, um, what do they call them? Olives. Because that's where we got the oil. And the increase of the kind that goes into cattle the flocks of thy sheep, until he have destroyed thee. Until we are completely what? We don't have anything. We are impoverished, landless, living in Bantu stands. Because when they took these lands from us, they created Bantu stands and they shoved us. That's why now we're living in the Kasis. What are the Kasis? Kasis are modern day Bantu stands. Understand that, okay? Understand that thing. Keep reading, read verse 52. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates. Meaning they're going to starve us. They're going to take our resources from us. We're going to be impoverished. Read. Until thy high and fenced walls come down. Because we had, we had what? We had property. We had land, property. We had livestock and resources upon the land. Okay, go ahead. Wherein thou trustest throughout all thy land. Mm -hmm. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land which the Lord thy God has given thee. You see that thing? So that's what they would do when they arrived. So young Van Riebeck was not here for refreshments. Understand that? You understand? Bartholomew Diaz, he was not here for refreshments. Vasco da Gama, they were not here for refreshments. They were here for slaves, land and resources. That's why they were here. So don't be fooled. So what they taught us in school, they just lied to us. Okay? Now, Watch this. So go back to Genesis 49, okay? Genesis chapter 49, read verse 8 one more again. Genesis chapter 49, verse 8. Read. Right. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Come thy on. hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Mm -hmm. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. You see that part right there? Is that thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. You understand? Whose neck? The head of the rulers of the heathen. Who's that? The Bures, the Dutch, the British, the Portuguese. You understand? 
we're going to be going toe to toe with them politically. We're going to fight with them. You understand? Because we're going to challenge the apartheid system because that's what we did. That's why he says, Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. You understand? We're going to form, we're going to form political parties because that's what our forefathers did. We're going to form a revolutionary movement, you understand, to fight against oppression. Now watch this. I'm going to show you something this day. Okay? I want you to read this now. Read that. This is an example when it says, thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. This is what we did. Okay? Read that. Sharpville. The Sharpville massacre of 21st March 1960. Watch this. Read Reading from South African History Online, mm -hmm. Sharpville Massacre, 21st March, 1960. Okay, come on. At the annual conference of the African National Congress, the ANC, held in Durban on 16 December, 1959, the mm. President General of the ANC, Chief Albert Lutuli, announced that 1960 was going to be the year of the past. The, the what? The year of the past. Is as 1960 was going to be the year of the past. The year of the past. Remember, they were going to boycott. They say, we are no longer going to be carrying around dump passes all over the place. You understand? But I'm going to show you something. Keep going. Through a series of mass actions, the ANC planned to launch a nationwide anti-pass anti -pass campaign on 31st March, the anniversary of the 1919 anti-pass campaign so now watch this i'm going to show you something it says 1960 was going to be the year of the past right hold this give me second answers okay give me give me give me second because you know what give me exodus 1 verse 8 let's go back there i'm going to show you something exodus 1 verse 8 remember our enemies they dealt wisely with us especially before the 60s they had already prepared they were already of course remember there was the apartheid government was running rampant. They were oppressing us, killing and, and, and raping our mothers and our daughters. You understand? But the reason why they were so hard on the black men in this country, the same way they were hard on the black men in the US, there was a reason behind it. It wasn't an accident that they were so hard on the black men. I'm going to show you that thing. Get that in Exodus 1 verse 8. Read that for me. Exodus chapter 1 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Now there rose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Wait. Really? And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Go ahead. Come on, let us deal wisely with them. Stop right there. Let he says, come on, let us deal wisely with them. Because what did they do? Give me second Ezra 15 verse 17. Watch this. Second Ezra chapter 15 verse 17. You know what? Start at the 16. Watch this. Read the 16. Second Ezra chapter 15 verse 16. Go ahead. For there shall be sedition among men. Stop right there. They, hold on. There shall be sedition among men. Meaning what? Civilians, meaning slaves, are going to what? They're going to revolt against the government. That's what we read here. There shall be sedition among men. Which men? Our forefathers during the 60s. Okay, go ahead. And invading one another. They're going to invade one another. He's gonna, we're going to see what it means when he says invading one another. When we read the article, you're going to understand. Go ahead. They shall not regard their kings nor princes. They're not going to care about their apartheid regime. They're going to do it because they care about their people. Go ahead. And the course of their actions shall stand in their power. They're going to stand in the power of saying, listen, we must come together as a people. We must fight against the oppressor. You understand? The head of the rulers of the heathens unto the neck. That's why it says, thy hand shall be and to all, it shall, the hand shall be in the neck of their enemies. Which enemy? The Bures. You understand? The British. The Portuguese. Okay, go ahead. A man shall desire to go into a city and mm. shall not be able. Read that again, read that again. Come on. 
Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 17. Mm -hmm. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. You see that thing? Because the reason why we could not be able to, we were not allowed to go into cities like that is because there was what? There was the, 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 the past laws were implemented and they were enforced. If you wanted to come to Pretoria, you had to get a letter from your boss. Your boss must tell you why you are there and how long you're going to be there for, who you are going to see. The police will be interrogating you to want to make sure that you've got a letter from your, from your slave master. If you did not have it, you're going to jail, my friend. Okay, read again. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 17. Mm -hmm. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. Shall not be able. Now, because the past, the past laws was fully enforced among our forefathers and foremothers. Read on. For because of their pride, the cities shall be troubled. You see that thing? Because of the proud, the pride of who? The pride of the enemy, the pride of the oppressor. Who? who? The Bures, the Dutch, the Portuguese, the Brits. They are the ones, that's their pride. It says, because of their pride, the cities shall be troubled. Because what were they doing? They were terrorizing our fathers and mothers. They were terrorizing the kids. They were terrorizing our brothers and sisters during apartheid. You understand? You couldn't walk around at 8 o'clock at night because, you know, my, mm, the landlord, which is, 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 is an old madal, he tells me the stories. He was in Soweto. He's like, we couldn't go out. If you went out, they will be driving around the community with guns. The soldiers, there was martial law that was implemented in the community. They find you, guess what? You go into jail. You try to run, you get put to death. That's what they were doing. The Bures in this country. Okay, well. The houses shall be destroyed. They were destroying our houses as well. They were breaking families apart. You understand? Well. And men shall be afraid. Our fathers and mothers, they were living in fear. We're still living in fear. Because right now, remember, we're mentally we're traumatized as a people. We're living with trauma. Because what happened during the, 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 the slave trade, not only that, but what happened during 70 AD, later on in these last days, what happened during apartheid, we're still living in trauma. Understand that? And to this day, psychological hangups, mental and spiritual hangups, we live with that every single day, from the older ones to the young ones. You understand? We're living with that trauma. Understand that thing. That's what the Lord is telling us here. Okay? Now, go back to the article now. Okay? Go back to the article. I want you to read that. You see my screen? Yes, sir. Should I start? Sir? Okay, read the that. It says, Chief Albert Mutuli. Read that. Chief Albert Mutuli announced that 1960 was going to be the year of the past. Mm -hmm. Through a series of mass actions, the ANC planned to launch a nationwide anti-pass campaign on 31st March, the anniversary of the 1919 anti-pass campaign. Go ahead. A week later, a breakaway group from the ANC, the Pan-Africanist Congress, PAC, held its first conference in Johannesburg. At this conference, it was announced that the PAC would launch its own anti-pass campaign. So now what's happening here is they are fighting among themselves because they, they, were, they did not agree on the objective and the mission of why the organization exists. Hence, the Pan-Africanist Congress was formed. Okay, a breakaway group. Now watch this. Let's go there. The Pan-Africanist Congress, the PAC. Now I want you to read this thing right here. That's our forefather, Robert Subukwe. Oh, praise to the Lord. Okay, now read that. Pan-Africanist Congress. The Pan-Africanist Congress is a political party whose presence in the South African political landscape spans just over half a century. Mm -hmm. The PAC's origins came about as a result of the lack of consensus on the Africanist debate within the African National Congress. Because they could not agree. Keep going. When the Freedom Charter was adopted at Cape Town 
1955, those who championed the Africanist ideological stance felt that this was a betrayal of the struggle. So now because they could not agree on why they were fighting, is, is going to be clear on what was the fight about. Keep going. The deepening of political differences broke out into the open in November 1958. Really? At the Transvaal Provincial Congress of the ANC, Africanist members were excluded from the horde. This group of people resolved to break away from the ANC and form a political party. Mm -hmm. On 6 April 1959, the PAC was formed at Orlando Community Hall in Soweto. Robert Mangaliso Sobukwe, mm -hmm. an, an ardent Africanist who was key to the breakaway, was elected as its founding president and Putlako Libalo as secretary. So now, watch this. So they launched their own political party. They broke away from the ANC, right? This is our forefather. You understand? Watch this. Now, this is him right here. Okay, let's get a small synopsis of when he was born and so forth. Read that. Robert Sobukwe. Uh -huh. Robert Mangaliso Sobukwe was born in Hubert and Angelina Sobukwe was born to Hubert and Angelina Sobukwe on 5th December 1924 at Graf Reynet, Cape Province. Uh -huh. He was the youngest of five boys of five boys and one girl. His father worked as a municipal laborer and a part-time woodcutter, his mother as a domestic worker and cook at a local hospital. Okay, all pages. Now I want to show you something, right? What he stood for, okay? Now, let me go down. Let's go down real quick. Yes. He says, politically, read it. Politically, Sobukwe was strongly Africanist, believing that the future of South Africa should be in the hands of Black South Africans. So great thing. So part of the reason why they broke away from the ANC was that they believed that if we want to solve the problem of the Black man, Black people must be the ones to lead the charge. We must not have this multiracial because ANC was pushing integration. Robert Sobiko was against that. You understand? Go ahead. As a result of, of his skepticism toward the multiracial path the ANC was following, Sobuko was mm -hmm. instrumental in initiating an African breakaway from the ANC in 1958. Which you see what the problem, you see what, what, hold on, you see what was the problem? So ANC was pushing multiracial uh, government while Robert Subuka was like, no, we're not doing that. So the reason why you see today ANC is doing nothing for the community is because what they stand for, they stand for what? Every day. ANC is like the Christian church. Let me say that again. ANC is like the Christian church. Everybody can be saved. That's what they teach. You understand? South Africa belongs to all who live in it, particularly the people that own the land, the white people. White people own 87% of the land, and the rest of us, we live on 13% of the land. 25 million plus people live on 13% of the land, while 4% of white people, which is 4 million plus, they live on 87% of the land in South Africa. Those are the statistics for you. So ANC is okay with that. This thing of saying land first, black first, land first, those are just fairy tales here. Okay, understand that. Now, keep reading. So Buka was instrumental in, in initiating an African breakaway from the ANC in 1958 which led to the birth of the Pan-Africanist Congress. He stated, in 1955, the Clip Town Charter was adopted, which according mm -hmm. to us is irreconcilable conflict with the 1949 program, seeing that it claims land no longer Africa. But- You see that thing? Hold on. It claims land no longer Africa, meaning what? He's gonna explain what he means by that, go ahead but is auctioned for sale to all who live in this country. Stop right there. I want you to stop right there. He says now, because this is what the ANC was pushing. They are still pushing it today, by the way. 
is as but is auctioned for sale to all who live in this country. Now let's think now, okay? Remember, the Portuguese invaded us, the Dutch invaded us, the British invaded us. They took our land, okay? They took our resources, they enslaved our fathers and mothers. So now, when it says the land is on auction, who's buying it? Because obviously it's not us. They stripped, out, they stripped us of all our resources. They stripped us of all our wealth. They stole from us. Now the land is auctioned for sale to all who live in this country. So who do you think is going to get the most, the most land and the best part of the land? The people that stole from us. They steal, they steal the people. They steal the resources. They steal the land, the entire continent, and rename the people and enslave them to work on the land that they own. You brother see this? Yes, sir. Yes, I sir. need you men to open your eyes and see what's going on here. Now watch this. Give me that in a book chapter one, verse six. Okay, read. Abaku chapter one, verse six. Mm -hmm. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, which shall march mm. through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. You see that thing? The Chaldeans is talking about who? The white man. The Chaldeans is talking about the white man. He says, they are a bitter and a hasty nation. We shall march through the breadth of the land. Meaning they're going to get the best places of the land when they arrive here. They were not coming here for refreshments, like I said. They were here for land, resources, livestock, and to enslave the people. You understand? To possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. So they own the land. So Robert Sobukwe was fighting for the land. He said, but this land belonged to the people that live here. It does not belong to the imposters. It does not belong to the foreigners. And when I say foreigners, I'm not talking about Operation Tudula, that demonic, that demonic movement. No. I'm talking about the real foreigners, which is the Dutch, the French, the British, the Portuguese, you understand, the Bures, okay? These are the real foreigners on this land because the Lord tells you, says, I'm going to send a nation against you from far. He's not talking about your brother from Nigeria. He's not talking about your brother from the Congo because these lands were also conquered by the white men suffering the same oppression. That's why these brothers like Wintanta Lux he is an amateur. He's an amateur. He doesn't know what he's talking about. You understand? He's a small boy. He doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Okay. Now, watch this. Give me Michael. Okay. Michael. Operation to do is like it's just run by kids, you know, Fra kids that are frustrated. Yeah? Kids that are just mad. They don't know what, what to do with themselves. They need the Holy Bible. Now read Michael 2, verse 1. Micah chapter 2, verse 1. Read. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. Mm -hmm. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. You see that thing? So the people that had power to take land from us, it wasn't the, the brother from the Congo. Because who conquered them in the Congo? Who conquered them in the Congo? Leopold. Leopold of Belgium, the French conquered Central Africa. You understand? So our people from Angola, the Portuguese conquered them. Our people from Nigeria, the British conquered them. You understand? So now what you are seeing is what? You are seeing an agenda to cause confusion among the 12 tribes of Israel. And who's pushing this? Black people. Our own people that hate their own people. And what, where, where's the hatred coming from? Why Jesus is the, is the root cause. Why Jesus is the root cause why black men hate other black men from the same continent suffering the same oppression as we do. You cannot make this stuff up. Now read on, verse two, come on. And they covered fields mm -hmm. and take them by violence. Read. And houses and take them away. So they Read. oppress a man in his house, even a man mm -hmm. in his heritage. That's the same thing that we read in Abaku. You understand? Is that they coveted our fields, meaning the land. 
and they took the land by violence. They took the land by violence in the Congo, in Mozambique, in Gabon, in Rwanda, in the in Kenya. You understand? Burundi, hmm? Cameroon, the Gulf of Guinea, Saint Thomas, that island right there, Cape Verde, hmm? Namibia, because the Germans are over there. South Africa, the British are over here. The Dutchman is over here. Madagascar, the French. So what we're reading here is the main foreigner that will do this to us. And that's the fight that our forefather Robert Sobuko was fighting. And the ANC was like, no, no, no. We want a multiracial what what? We want a multiracial society. And we're going to auction the land to who live in here, who live here, who can afford to buy. But remember, the true owners of the land were stripped of the land, the resources on the land, their livestock, their livelihood. So wh where are they going to get the money from to actually buy this land that is being auctioned? Where do they get the money from? The real foreigners, which is the white men, they are the ones that have all our wealth. So where we get the money from to buy our... To, imagine, even if we had the money, so you telling me I must buy my own land back? Are you kidding? That's why there was a problem with the ANC and Robert Sobukwe. And guess what? The ANC today, they are still pushing the same agenda. Understand that thing. Understand that. So what, what the ANC is pushing is the same thing that uh, Operation Dudula is pushing. Understand that thing. Hmm. That's a topic for another day. Now, let's go back. Now read that. I want you to read that. Repeat that thing again. Up to when it says um, in this country. I want you to read that. Read up to you. Read that highlighted part. Read that. In 1955, the Cape Town Charter was adopted, which according to mm -hmm. us is irreconcilable conflict with the 1949 program, seeing that it claims land no longer Africa, but is auctioned for sale to all who live in this country. You notice, you notice, you notice, you see Robert Sobuke, very smart brother. He says, you see what he's saying here? He says in 1955, the Clip Town Charter was adopted, which according to us is, irreco is, is irreconcilable conflict with the 1949 program, seeing that it claims land no longer Africa. He didn't say land no longer South Africa. He said, land no longer Africa. You see how he was thinking? He was a high level thinker because he wasn't thinking, he was thinking about the people upon the continent. He wasn't just thinking about the people in South Africa because he knew that the white man, Otto von Bismarck, he divided the continent up. That's why today there's borders on the continent. 1884, the Berlin Conference, that's how they divided the continent. That's why he is saying, seeing that that it claims land no longer Africa. He didn't say South Africa. What was he thinking about? He was thinking our, about our brothers in the Congo. He was thinking about our brothers in Nigeria, that they are suffering the same issues that we are suffering here. So when you see these small boys, one planter lacks, you understand? They don't know what the hell they are talking about because guess what? People like Gabo Robert Sobukwe, guess what? There's no way they would get along. Impossible. Because they didn't have it, they didn't look at the bigger picture. They did not look at the bigger picture. Those are not leaders. Those are just kids with social media access. That's it. Okay. Now keep reading. We have come to the parting of the ways, and we are here and now giving notice that we are de-associating de ourselves from the ANC as it is constituted at present in the Transvaal. Now read on. At the PAC's inaugural Congress held in Orlando from 4th to 6th April, 1959, Sobukwe was unanimously elected the party's first president. Mm -hmm. Sobukwe's eloquence as a public speaker, his intelligence and commitment to his cause soon established him as natural leader. And helped mm -hmm. him Great. and helped him rally support for the PAC. Great. So Bukwe's opposition to multiracialism in favor of non-racialism is apparent in an extract from his inaugural speech 
at the PAC launch in 1959. So now he was not for that thing, you know, you know multiracialism. That means that um, the people that stole from us, the people that divided the continent up, the people that make sure that we are divided as a people, they are the ones that are going to have cut blanche and power to have what? The power to control who gets the land because they have buying power. Where did they get the buying power from? From us, because they stole from us. They stole from us. Every business that exists today, these Fortune 500 companies, who Standard Bank, who FNB, who APSA, and all of that, all they, they are using slave money. They call it old money. They did not have no money when they arrived here. They found us as they found us having wealth, and they stole that wealth from us. From us. So these these big, big banks and all that they exist because of what? Because of the money, the resources, and the land, the the wealth, the riches they stole from us when they arrived. Understand that, okay? It's not because they were so clever, they were so smart. No, it wasn't because of that. Okay, now. Let me see, let me see. Give me one second. Okay. Okay, keep reading. A week after the ANC announced its, its anti-pass campaign in December 1959, the PAC announced that it was planning to initiate a campaign against the pass laws with the aim to free South Africa by 1963. So now remember, 1960, right? So now are, this is the turbulent 60s. Apartheid is still hot, okay? But our forefathers are rising up. Don't forget now. It says, Jura thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. That's what was good. That's what's going on here. They are seeking identity and ownership of land. Understand that? Go ahead. On 16th March, 1960, so Bukwe wrote to the commissioner of police, Major General Redemeyer, stating the PAC would be holding a five-day non-violent, disciplined, and sustained protest campaign against pass laws, starting on 21st mm. March. Really? On 21st March, 1960, at the launch of the PAC's anti-pass campaign, so Bukwe resigned from his post as lecturer at the University of Vert Petersen. He made last-minute arrangements for the safety of his family and left his home in Mulofo. He intended to give himself up for arrest at the Orlando police station in the hope that his actions would inspire other Black South Africans. You see that thing? So now he was doing this. He was willing to sacrifice himself for the benefit of his people. So Sobuko was a savior. Understand that. Robert Sobuko was a savior. You see, this, this is the same mindset that that's the, he was moving in the same mindset as our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. He was a revolutionary man. Understand that thing. For his people, he was willing to do that thing. Go ahead. Along the eight-kilometer walk to the police station, small groups of men joined him from neighboring areas like Pefeni, Dube, and Orlando West. Mm -hmm. As the small crowd approached the station, most of the marchers, including Subukwe, were arrested and charged with sedition. You see, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They were charged with what? Charged with sedition. Where did we just read that? Go back to 2nd Answer 15. Read verse 16 again. 2nd Answer 15. Man. Go ahead. Come on. Read. For there shall be sedition among men. There shall be what? There shall be sedition among men. That's what you're seeing. That's what we're reading here about our forefather, Robert Sobukwe. That's what he did. Okay, go ahead. And invading one another. Meaning one. They, they, because remember, he said, we're gonna, he wrote a letter to say, listen the, to the commission of police. This is what we are planning to do. We are not coming with guns because they didn't have none. We're not coming with weapons and all of that. We are coming to have, we are going, we are going to protest. We don't want to be carrying dumb passes all over the place wherever we have to travel. This is our land. Why do we have to? Why do I have to have a passport to go to Pretoria? What the hell is this? Okay, read. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, mm. and the cause of their actions shall stand in their power. Now let's go back. Read the article again. 
He says, when an estimated group, read that. When an estimated group of 5,000 marchers reached Sharpville police station, the police opened fire, killing 69 people and injuring 180 others in what became known as the Sharpville massacre. In what became known as the what? In what became known as the Sharpville massacre. In what became known as the Sharpville massacre. You see what they did is as when the estimated group of 5,000 marchers reached Sharpville police station, the police opened fire, killing 69 people and injuring 180 others in what became known as the Sharpville massacre. So they massacred our people. You understand? Now watch this. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something here. Because remember, the 60s, some things, there, there, were, there, were, there were important things that was going on during the 60s. I'm going to show you something. Because guess what? He was arrested, okay? Um, now, I want you to read this. Yeah? Read that paragraph right there. The documentation on the banishment noted that Sobukwe and Libalo had both been arrested and were awaiting trial, but it was necessary to have a banishment order in hand just in case they are released. So you see that thing? Never... Hold on. So they wanted to make sure that, yes, we're going to arrest them. So in case they are released, we're going to put a decree out that they must be banished from any political activist, um, you know, to push him, um, activism in the community to incite other men and women to what? To push the same thing. They, so they are, a, they are a contingency. In case they get released from prison, we must make sure that they must not do what they did before they came out, you know, before they went into, into prison. Okay, read on. So Bukwe never spent time in banishment as he was sentenced to imprisonment for incitement. Now watch this. Hmm. Mm. You're gonna read this because he was in he was he was he was sent to uh Robben Island, right? So this is uh 1960. Okay, watch this. Um, I wanna read the whole thing, but you know what? Read that, read that part right there, just that part. On 4th May 1960, Sobukwe was sentenced to three years in prison for inciting Africans to demand the repeal of the past laws. Meaning what? It must stop. Now read that. At the end of his three-year sentence on 3 May 1963, Parliament enacted a General Law Amendment Act. Okay, let's see what the Amendment Act is about. Read on. The act included what was termed the Sobukwe Clause, mm. which empowered the Minister of Justice to prolong the detention of any political prisoner indefinitely. You see what they did? They even created a clause under his name. You understand? To make sure that any political prisoner they must retain, they must remain in prison, you understand, indefinitely. Now watch this. Keep reading. I'm going to show you something. Go ahead. Subsequently, Sobukwe was moved to Robben Island, where he remained for an additional six years. So, the clause was so you hold on, three years, right? Three years in prison. No prison, yeah, three years is sentenced. It says he was moved then because there was this Sobukwe clause was created to make sure that any political prisoner must remain under detention indefinitely. Subsequently, he was, he was moved to Robben Island, where he remained for an additional six years. So now is nine years, right? We're together so far. All praises, sir. Okay, now read that highlighted part again. Okay. Subsequently, Sobuko was moved to Robben Island, where he remained for an additional six years. The clause was never used to detain anyone else. You see that? But why did they focus on him? Why did they focus on him so much? Because his movement was dangerous. Why? Because he was only for his people. I want you men to understand that. When you rise up, 
to, de to, to defend your nation, you are going to be an enemy of the state. I want you men to understand that. And that's what this movement is about. What the Lord is raising us up for, we are going to be enemies of the state. I want you must be prepared for that thing. Watch this. Give me the book of Nehemiah 2 verse 10 real quick. You understand? Because he was only concerned about his people. That's why the punishment was so harsh. And you notice or nobody from the ANC government actually supported him. You see that thing? Yes, sir. None. Okay, now watch this. Get that in Nehemiah 2. Nehemiah chapter 2. Read verse 10. Okay, watch this. Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 10. Go ahead. When Sanpala the Horonite and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite, heard of it, it grieved them exceedingly that there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. Because that's what our forefather Rupert Subugo was about. He was seeking the welfare of the children of Israel. He was seeking the welfare of his people. That's why they made sure that they created the Subugo clause to make sure that he remains in prison. You understand? That, and also that if there's any chance that he gets released, they must make sure that he's banished from any political activist work that he may continue to do while he's on the outside. You understand that? I hope you brothers understand that. Okay. Now, watch this. I want you to read the highlighted part one, once again, once again, once again. Subsequently, Sobuke was moved to Robben Island where he remained for an additional six years. The clause was never used to detain anyone else. Because remember, 69 people was killed, right? 69 people was put to death and they were unarmed. 180 others, he says, they became what known, um, they were injured. 180 people was injured, 69 people were killed. You understand? Innocent people, innocent fathers and mothers, sons and daughters, they were killed. They, have no, they, were not, they were not armed. And guess what? He was actually honorable. He actually sent a letter to say, we're going to be doing this on this day. We are not coming with no weapons. We are coming unarmed. That's not the same thing they did in 1976, in June, June 1976, the Soweto uprising. The children, when they came, it was kids, students. They did not have any weapons. But the white, the Bure police, they opened fire. So, but what is, what, what is behind all of this? You telling me that you will open fire on kids. You open fire on people that are unarmed. I'm going to show you the reason behind it. What's this? Remember now, he's in jail for what? how many years? Nine years he's in jail. You understand? So this is what, what year? 1969. Hmm. Watch this. Give me, give me the book. You know what? Before we get there, I'm going to touch on something. Okay, I want to touch on this. I want to touch on this. Read that thing again, okay? Read that part again. I want to touch on that, okay? Read it. As the small crowd approached the station, most mm -hmm. of the marchers, including Sobukwe, were arrested and charged with sedition. When an estimated group of 5,000 marchers reached Sharpville police station, the police opened fire killing 69 people and injuring 180 others in what became known as the Sharpville Massacre. Now watch this. Let's see what the Bible has to say about that thing. Give me Leviticus 26 verse 17. Leviticus 26 verse 17. The Sharpville Massacre is written in the Holy Bible. Okay. The Sharpville Massacre is written in the Holy Bible. Understand it. Read it. Leviticus. Chapter 26, verse 17. Mm -hmm. And I will set my face against you. Great. And ye shall be slain before your enemies. Ye shall be what? Ye shall be slain before your enemies. Go ahead. They that hate you shall reign over you. They that hate shall you shall what? They that hate you shall reign over you. They that hate you shall rule over you. So the people that ruled over us, that were ruling over us during apartheid, who was there? The Bures. You understand? They were ruling over us, including working together with the, the, the Portuguese and the Brits. 
Okay, read that part again. They that hate you shall reign over you. Mm -hmm. And ye shall flee when none pursueth you. You shall flee when none pursueth you. You understand? So what I want to what I want what I want you to see here is this. Okay, give me one second. Let me share my screen real quick. Okay. Okay, I thought they would have it, but they don't seem to have that. Okay, let me share my screen real quick. Let me share my screen. Okay, read, the, read that verse again, Leviticus 26, verse 17 again. The Shabvil massacre, because this is what you are seeing here. Okay, read. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 17. Go ahead. And I will set my face against you, mm -hmm. and he shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and he shall flee you. See what the Bible, you see what the Bible, the most High says, they that hate you shall rule over you, because the white men, they hate us. The Buddhas, they despise our gods. They're all of them, they are all the same. It says, and ye shall flee when none pursueth you. Now, look at this right here. You see, these are kids. Look at them. This is young, young boys, young girls, fathers. Look at fathers on the run. Mothers. You see our mother right there? Our mother right there. Fathers on the run because they opened fire. They were unarmed. Look at them. Do they have guns on them? Do they have weapons on them? No. But they opened fire and they killed our people on this day. You understand? Look at that right there. Look at that. Just look at that thing. Look at that. They open fire. Okay. You see, look at this. This is the apartheid police. They are look at the, they are beating our fathers and mothers. Look at our mother right there. Hmm? Look at them begging. Remember what we read. He says, These people have no mercy, they don't give it. Damn about us. Okay? Look at what they were doing. You understand? Because think about it. You, you, you can see that the PNC, what they were pushing, the ANC was against it. Think about that thing. I want you to think about it. And guess what? On the 21st, Koshab Deal, Ramaphosa is going to be speaking about this day. But our people, because they don't read, they don't read, they don't research nothing, so they just be listening to uh, Ramaphosa is just speaking. They don't know what really happened on that day and why it happened. You understand? Look at that. Look at them. Look at this. These people are not sleeping. They are dead. They were slaughtered. They were massacred. You understand? Look at this. Man, this makes me so angry. Okay. Look at that thing. Now, give me the book of Isaiah chapter 8. Give me that real quick. Okay, is that what I want? No, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 8. Jeremiah 8 verse 1. Okay, Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse 1. Watch this. Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 1. Mm -hmm. You know what? At the Get Jeremiah 7 first. Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 32. Watch this. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 32. Go ahead. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be called Tophet, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the really? valley of slaughter. But the what? But the valley of slaughter. This is the valley of slaughter right here. This is the valley of slaughter. Shabdil. Go ahead. For they shall bury in Tophet till there be no place. Till there be no place to bury the people. So that's what you're seeing here. Shabdil, the valley. This is the valley right here. Okay, read verse 33. Go ahead. And the carcasses of these people shall be meat for the fowls of the heaven. The carcasses. You see the dead bodies. Carcasses is dead bodies. Is that the dead bodies of the Israelites 
shall be what he says shall be meat for the fowls of the heaven meaning the bears will be eating upon the dead bodies of our fathers and mothers lying down here go ahead and for the beasts of the earth and mm -hmm. none shall fray them away none shall fray them they're going to just allow the people to be lying to be dead out here you understand so that's what happened during that day on that day that's what happened okay no, that's it on that. That's it on that. Okay. I just wanted to show you that so you can see what really happened on that day. Okay. Our fathers and mothers and kids, sons and daughters, they were put to death. Okay. They were killed. Look at that. Look, that's a child right there. He's crying. Look at the police. Look at the carcasses of our fathers and mothers right here on the on the on the ground. Okay. Look at that. These are our mothers. With passes, we are slaves. You see that? These are our mothers right here. These are our mothers right here. They were behind the black men. They were behind our fathers in this fight. Unlike today. You understand? This is our history, y'all. That's our history right there. Okay? So we must never forget this day on what happened on this day and why it took place. Because today, our people don't, our kids, they use, they don't even know who Robert Sobukwe is. They don't know. They don't know him. I remember when we were teaching in, in Soweto, I was asking the kids, I said, do you know what happened on this day? Many of them didn't know, but he was dead, but they had no clue what happened on that day. They didn't know. You understand? Hmm. Now, Let's go back. Let's go back to this now. Let's go back. Okay. So I want to go back to when our forefather Robert Subugwe was detained. Okay. I want to go back to that thing. Oh, yes. All praises to the most high. Okay. So I want you to read that, right? Yeah. I want you to read that thing. Yes, sir. Read that. At the end of his three-year sentence on 3 May 1963, Parliament mm -hmm. enacted a General Law Amendment Act. The act included what was termed the Subukwe Clause, which empowered Wait. the Minister of Justice to, to prolong the detention of any political prisoner indefinitely. Subsequently, mm -hmm. Subukwe was moved to Robben Island, where he remained for an additional six years. The clause was never used to detain anyone else. Now watch this. Keep reading. The Sobuka clause was renewed every year when it was due to expire on 30th June 1965. The government renewed it. You see what they keep doing? They kept renewing the Sobuka clause to keep him longer in prison. So guess what? He was in prison nine years. Remember nine years? He was there in Robin in uh, six years. He was he was in Robin Island, right? Hmm. I want you. I want you. I, I, I want. I want. I want. I want you to see something, right? I want you to see something. Why did the government keep keep? Why did the government keep renewing the renewing the Subukwe clause to keep this man in prison? Why? What's this? Now I want you. To, I want you to see something. Read that part right there. Read that. Sobuka was released from prison in May 1969 and was banished to Khalishiwe in Kimberley, where he was joined by his family. However, he remained under 12-hour house arrest and his banning order prohibited him from participating in any political activity. You see what they did? Even when he was released in 1969, he says he was banished to Khalishiwe in Kimberley where he was joined by his family, right? However, he remained under 12-hour house arrest and his banning order prohibited him from participating in any 
political activity. Hmm. Watch this. Give me the book of Revelation chapter 11, verse 11. Watch this thing right here. Revelation chapter 11, verse 11. Revelation chapter 11. Because 11. remember, what, what he stood for was what? What he stood for was he only cared about the deliverance of his people. But the ANC didn't stand for that. The ANC wanted everybody, you understand, including who? The everybody means the people that oppressed us, the people that enslaved us, the people that renamed us, the people that stole from us. And guess what? They took everything from us. Raped, robbed, married, and raped everything of ours, including our sons and our daughters, our cattle. Okay? Now, read that. Revelation 11, verse 11. Watch this. Revelation chapter 11, verse 11. Mm -hmm. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. Mm -hmm. And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And, and what, what, what fell upon them? And great fear fell upon them which saw them. So great fear fell upon our enemies that saw was standing up for the deliverance of our people. Because we cared for our people. That's what our forefather Robert Subuka stood for. He stood for the deliverance of our people. You understand? So, but here it says, after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood upon their feet. Meaning the Israelites, they would wake up after three days and a half. Hmm. What does it mean three days and a half? Hold this. Give me the book of Numbers 14, verse 34. What does that mean after three days and a half? What does that mean, three days and a half? He says that the children of Israel will wake up, okay? Starting with regaining their identity. That's what we read in Ezekiel chapter 37. We which got Numbers 14, verse 34. Numbers chapter 14, verse 34. Go ahead. After the number of the days in which he searched the land, even 40 days, each day for a year. Each day for what? Each day for a year. Great. Right. Shall he bear your iniquities even 40 years, and he shall know my breach of promise. So now what we're reading here is, it says each day for a year. Each day for a year. So now think about this thing right here, right? So what we're reading here, this is a metaphor what we're reading in Revelation chapter 11, verse 11. Go back to Revelation 11, verse 11. Revelation chapter 11, verse 11. Mm -hmm. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. So now what's happening here is, John the Revelator is prophesying, says, after three days and a half, this three days and a half is not talking about actually three days and a half. It's talking about 350 years. It says after 350 years of the children of Israel being in slavery, it says the spirit of life from God will enter into them and they shall live. You understand? It says great fear will fall upon them which saw them. What you, what you notice here with our forefather Robert Sugube, right? With the Pan-Africanist movement. What was he doing? He started this movement to liberate his people. He was not for this multiracial, multicultural nonsense that the ANC was pushing back then and the ANC is pushing today. Where are they getting this thing from? This multiracial whatever thing. They are getting from America, the US, Europe. Because Europe, they push them. They are pushing all nations under God, all nations and all that. They are pushing rainbow nations. That's what they are pushing. The ANC, this is what the ANC was pushing. They were pushing Greek philosophy. Give me that in First Maccabees 1. The ANC has been pushing Greek philosophy from that time until this day. They were pushing Greek philosophy. Okay? All meaning multiracial society and all that. They get it from the Greeks. Letting you know, because remember, we are a colony. You understand? We are a colonial state. We are owned by British, by the British. We are owned by the Dutch. You understand? We are still paying colonial tax. Understand that? Give me that in First Maccabees 1.1. This is Antiochus. You understand? Antiochus Epiphanes. When he took over the kingdom of the 
the kingdom of the Greeks. This is what he implemented. Okay, read it. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 41. Read. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. You see that thing? That all should be one people. Multiracial society. That's what King Antiochus pushed. What was he pushing? Democracy. Because right here, this is the birth of democracy right here in Athens, in Greece. So the reason why Robert Sobukwe and his brothers, they broke away from the ANC is because the ANC was pushing democracy. He wasn't. He was pushing the deliverance of his own people. He wasn't concerned about the other nations. He wasn't concerned about the Chinese. He wasn't concerned about white people because they are the ones that invaded us. They took everything from us. He wasn't pushing that, but the ANC was pushing that. The ANC is still pushing that. Understand that, okay? Read again, verse 41. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 41. Read. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. That all should be one people. Go ahead. And everyone should leave his laws. Mm -hmm. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. You see that thing? All the heathens agreed, meaning the other nations they were in agreement with Antiochus was pushing because this is when we were slaves under the Greeks. But watch the next verse. Go ahead. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion. Stop right there. Yea, many also of the Israelites, meaning of our people, our people, which is the Israelites, is that they consented to Antiochus's religion. What was the religion of the Greeks? Democracy. Democracy is the religion of the Greeks. So when you see our people pushing democracy and all of that, they are pushing the Greek religion. They are using the system that was implemented by the oppressor to deliver themselves from oppression. That's craziness. That's madness. Go ahead. And sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. What was the idols they are sacrificing to? Politics. Politics is an idol. How do they sacrifice? They vote. What is the, who's the idol? The president is the idol. The minister is the idol. That's why our people vote. When you vote, you are sacrificing to that idol. Who's the idol? The president. Or the potential electee who's going to be elected for president or the runner up. That's your idol. You sacrifice to that idol by voting. And if you don't get what you want, you do it all. You see that thing? These idols that our people are worshiping, the most I never conducted, commanded the black man or the black woman to vote. No, no, no. Because when we're voting, we're saying, we don't want the Heavenly Father to rule over us. That's what happened during the time of Saul, during the time of Samuel, when the people said, we want a king to rule over us, just like the other nations do. And Saul was, was elected as the king. And he was oppressing the people. That's what's going on today with the government that's running today. Same thing. You understand? Okay. Now, because I wanted to touch that. So go back to Revelation 11, verse 11 again. Revelation chapter 11, verse 11. Mm -hmm. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. And they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them. You see that thing? Great fear fell upon them which saw them. So now, watch this. Remember, the Lord says he's going to wake up our, our, our forefathers and foremothers, our for, for, forefathers because they are the leaders, we're the leaders of the nation. They're going to start to reclaim their identity. Part of that is deliverance for their own people. They're going to seek welfare for their own people when it comes to land, resources, culture, and knowing who they are. You understand? So, guess what? 1969, he was released from prison, but he was banished from participating in any political activity. And the political activity he was involved in, it was not democracy. It was deliverance for his own people. You understand? Welfare for his own people. Now watch this. Remember, you see, he says, after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. After three days and a half, 350 years. So 
remember who was taken into slavery after uh, who was taken into slavery last the the nation that was taken into slavery last in the nation of Israel was Judah Judah Benjamin and Levi the southern kingdom of Israel the one that we're reading about in Genesis 49 verse 8 and 9 that we would do what we are the, going to be the ones that the Lord will raise up first to to, to what to inspire the rest of the tribes to what to wake up and keep God's commandment, starting with reclaiming identity. Now, Sultan Yamai, I want you to do calculations, right? I want you to do on your calculations because 1619, that was the transatlantic slave trade. When Judah, Benjamin and Levi was taken from the west coast of Africa to North, Central and South America. You understand? The majority of Judah being in the North, which is North America. Now watch this. 1619 minus 1969. Why was the 60s so important, particularly 1969? Let's see. Let's do the calculation. Let's see how many years. Do, do that for me. Okay. 1619 minus 1969 is 350. So how many? How many? 350. 350. 350. That's 350 years. So from during the 60s, you see what the Buddhists were doing? You see what the white man was doing during that time in the 60s? Because they knew that 1969 is the year where the black man is going to wake up. Is the year when the black man is going to wake up, the black man will remember who he is. Understand that. The white man understood that. That's why they put so much, that's why they oppressed the black man so much in this country. That's why the black man was oppressed, was depressed, you understand, was ill-treated and mistreated, hung, raped, murdered, all kinds of evils was done to the black man, even when he was unarmed. He says the nations were afraid, the Buddhists were afraid. How, do, how did they know to be afraid? Because they read the Bible. They know about us. They know that Judah must wake, must wake up. And that's why ANC was not a threat, but PAC was a threat because Robert Sobuko was about his people. He wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't for everybody. That's why. And at the same time, in this in 1969, when they kept making sure that he was banished from any participation to wake up his people, what was America doing? Give me the book of Obadiah real quick. Let me show you what they were doing. Because they knew the beginning of their fall. They knew they went, when their, their empire will begin to fall. The white man knows that. Give me that in Obadiah. Obadiah and verse, read verse one. Obadiah verse one. Mm -hmm. The vision of Obadiah. Thus says the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord and an Wait. ambassador is sent among the heathen. Mm -hmm. Arising, and let us rise up against her in battle. So the subject matter here is Edom, a.k.a. the so-called white man. Jump down to verse 4. Watch this. No, no. Read verse, verse 3. 4. Read verse 3. Read verse 3. Go ahead. Obadiah, verse 3. Mm -hmm. The pride of thine heart has deceived thee. The pride Thou of the white man has... Hold on. The pride of the white man has deceived him. He's got too much pride. And his pride is deceived him, has deceived him. Go ahead. Thou that dwellest in the cleft of the rock. Because that's where they were. The clefts of the rock, that's the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. That's where they come from. That's why they are called Caucasians. Okay, go ahead. Whose habitation is high. Because they were dwelling Same. in caves, in mountains. They were dwelling in caves and in mountains. That's why when they came back into power, they started, they build what skyscrapers because it reminds them of where they, they come from, the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. These high rise buildings, yes. Go ahead. Whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Who shall what? Who shall bring me down to the ground? This is what Esau is saying in his mind. He says, Who's going to bring me down to the ground? In order for him to say that, he, he would have to be in power. You would have to have you would have power over the nations on earth, and that's what the white man has today. They run the whole earth. 
They control all nations on earth. That's why he's asking this question, who's going to bring me down to the ground? Because I'm powerful. Go ahead. Watch this. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. The eagle. And, that's his symbol, the eagle. Okay, come on. And though thou set thy nest among the stars. Though thou set thou set that though thou set thy nest among the stars. What is this talking about? Space travel. Because guess what happened in 1969? When there was there was turmoil going on on this side during apartheid, when our forefathers was rising up to lead our people out of oppression and so forth, when the Mosai was restoring identity to our forefathers to be about their people. Let me show you what was going on. Now I want you to read that right there. Tell me where you're reading from. Reading from history.com. History.com. Now read that thing right there. 1969, moon landing. 1969, moon landing. Read that. On July 20th, 1969, American astronauts Neil Armstrong and Edwin Buzz Aldrin became the first humans ever to land on the moon. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. About six and a half hours later, Armstrong became the first person to walk on the moon. Mm. As he took his first step, Armstrong famously said, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. That's the Apollo 11, right? One giant step, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Now I want you to think. I want you to think, right? So, how many flags, how, which nation's flags are on the moon? Which, which nation's flags were put on the moon? Is it everybody? No, sir. No, only America's flag is on the moon. So when it says that's one small step for men, it's talking about themselves. One giant leap for mankind, meaning his kind. Not everybody's kind. No, the white man's kind. That's what they are talking about. Go ahead. The Apollo 11 mission occurred eight years after President John F. Kennedy announced the national Go goal of landing a man on the moon by the end of the 1960s. By the what? By the end of 1960s. By the end of, of, of by the end of the 1960s, because the 60s all the way up to the 1969, all the way up to the 70s and all that. 69, that's when Esau will land on the moon. You understand? They'll put the they'll put the first man on the moon. Once they do that, here's what's gonna happen. Go back to Obadiah. Read verse four again. The book of Obadiah, verse four. Mm -hmm. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though when? thou set thy nest among the stars. Then will, will I bring moon you landing. down. Go ahead. Then, then will I what? Will I, then will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. So the Lord says, once the white man lands on the moon, guess what's going to happen? That's when the empire of the white man will begin to fall. That's what the Lord is telling you here through Obadiah. When that happens, when, when America's empire begins to fall, because it, it looked like they are actually prospering. No, they are not prospering. They started to fall when they landed on the moon. The Lord says, then will I bring thee down, said the Lord. Meaning the empire started to fall. And guess what was going on during that time? Israel was on the rise at the same time when America's empire began to fall in 1969. Judah will be raised up then the Lord will put breath in Judah. Judah will go to the streets and teach the people the laws of God now. You see that thing? That's yes, why sir. the white man was so mad with us on this side. That's why during Jim Crow on that side of the earth in America, they were so hard on the black man on that side of the earth as well. Because they knew that the 60s is our time period to make sure that the, the black man doesn't rise up. And guess what? We cannot stop the prophecy we have to do certain things in the, in the world to make sure that we distract them, we stop their building up. What did they do? 
they use the power of media to destroy the black man and the black woman. That's why the black man is portrayed on TV as a gangster, as a drug dealer, as a pimp. The black woman is portrayed, hey, she's just good for twerking. You understand? Clipping her bum on TV. Look at Wupel Tusi, nasty whore. Beyonce, nasty whore. They portray them on TV. The young girls, they use them as role models. That's why that's what they did. Give me that in first Ezra 5, verse 72. Watch this. First Ezra chapter 5. Okay. First Ezra chapter, chapter uh, first Ezra 5 verse 72. Read what you got. First Ezra chapter 5, verse 72. Go ahead. But the heathen of the land lying heavy upon the inhabitants of Judea and holding them straight, hindered their building. You see that thing, the heathen of the land, that's the Buddhists, that's America, that's Europe, that's the Chinese, the white man, the Dutch, the French, the British. It says, laying heavy upon the inhabitants of the land of Judea, holding them straight, meaning what? Making sure that um, we are hindered in building the 12 tribes of Israel. It says hindered their building. Because right now we are building a spiritual house. The 12 tribes of Israel, we're teaching our people God's laws. Go ahead. And by their secret plots. They are what? By their secret plots. The secret plots, they are called think tanks. They are think tanks, meaning they get the best of their people to, to, to concoct how to destroy and to keep the children of Israel blinded at the bottom, confused, and lost. Think tanks. That's why the United Nations was formed. The United Nations comes out of the League of Nations. The League of Nations is the Berlin Conference. Understand that. Okay, go ahead. And by their secret plots and popular persuasions. Popular persuasion is the media, Instagram, Facebook, OnlyFans. You understand? TikTok. Okay. WhatsApp. All of these Twitter, all these social media platforms, these are their popular persuasions. So they're using the media to push a false narrative, they're destroying our image through the media. They pay black men to sack their parents to become gay. Look at Busomiz, just a nasty Negro. You understand? Look at what they are doing. Look at Kanimbao, a nasty whore. What is she doing on TV? Having the scene that she played on this series called The Wife, porn. She's just doing pornography in, on DSTV. That's what they are doing. That's the image they are putting out there. You understand? And our people, they think those are our leaders. No, those are not leaders. Those are children with money. You understand? Children with money that are full of, they are full of what? They have got a nasty attitude. They don't give a damn about their people. Okay? Wait. And popular persuasions and commotions. Commotions is more brood, meaning more brood. Get enough Negroes and pay them enough money they will turn against their own. Read on. They hindered the finishing of the building all the time that King Cyrus lived. Read. So they were hindered from building for the space of two years until the reign of Darius. You see that part right there? Is that so they were hindered from, the, from, building, from building for the space of two years. So the nations, they keep hindering our rebuilding process. How do they do it? They use the media to prolong our waking up. That's why when now when you sit on the TV, you see garbage, you see evil. From the youngest to the oldest, it's all just evil on TV. And who's primarily on TV promoting garbage? Our people, the black men, the black women, through music, through media, through their social media accounts and all that. The image they are portraying is not... Is, is that they have nothing to do with the building of the 12 tribes of Israel, but is to destroy their own people through the images that they push out. Understand that thing, okay? So that's what they be doing. Now, watch this. Hmm, I don't know if I should go there. Do I want to touch on that? Yes, I do want to touch on that. Let's go back. Let's go back to Genesis 49 because that's where we were. We're still dealing with Judah. Okay, I'm cutting it short on Judah because there's a lot that I, I can go over, but I'm not going to do it tonight. Get Genesis 49. Go back to Genesis 49, verse 8. Because remember, our forefather, Robert Subukwe, 
he rose up he was a, he was he was about his people and they they hindered him from building from delivering his people from teaching his people by putting him in jail and they were also they also created clauses to make sure that when he comes out he's going to be banished from any political activity meaning don't go back and wake up your people because he wasn't pushing democracy he was pushing de deliverance for the 12 tribes of Israel, for his people, okay? Genesis 49, verse 8. Read that thing again for me. Genesis chapter 49, verse 8. Read. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Because guess what? In this 1969, that's when the, the Lord will put the spirit on Judah to teach with the Bible. I'm going to show you that thing. Keep reading. Judah is a lion's whelp. Is a what? Pray. Judah is a lion's whelp. Judah is a lion's whelp. A, a whelp, it goes into a young, powerful lion. You understand? In full pride. Go ahead. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. It says, from the prey, my son, thou art gone up. Because what did we do? We wanted to go against the powers that be. That's what Robert Subuku and them was doing. That's when that's what Steve Biko was doing. You understand? Not only here. You understand? Kwame Kuruma, Thomas Sankara. You understand? They rose up to what to deliver their people from oppression. They love the people. That's what says from the prey, my son. Thou art gone up. Go ahead. He stooped down. He stooped down. Meaning what? The efforts that they put in to deliver their people. It seemed like really they are going to deliver the people because they were really ruffling feathers. So much so that the apartheid police, the Bure government was afraid. They were scared of what was going on. They were afraid of what was taking place. Okay, go ahead. He couched as a lion. He did what? He couched as a lion. Because eventually our forefathers in, in, in these political um, arenas they got lost, you understand? Their movement didn't really go anywhere as, as such. But the things that they did do is they gave us, we, we, we were allowed certain rights, you know, you understand, civil rights to move around, it's freedom of speech. They were able to do that thing. That's why the certain freedoms that we have now, we can go out and teach on the streets. We can be able to, uh, to teach our people God's laws. We have that thing, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, so-called quote-unquote, these small freedoms that we have is because of what they did, for Robert Sobukwe, so that we can be able to, that in these last days, we'll be able to wake our people up. Understand that thing. That's why we must never speak evil of those men, because they love the people. They believed in them. They didn't even have the Holy Scriptures with them, but they put their lives on the line for the benefit of their people. So we must give respect unto them. Understand that. Read again, verse 9. Genesis chapter 49, verse 9. Really? Judah is the lion's whelp. Mm -hmm. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. Really? He stooped down, he couched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? He said he couched as a lion, meaning what? It looked like, listen, we really going to overcome. We really going to win the fight. But the law says he couched as a lion, because eventually, we lost the fight. You understand? We lost the fight. Is as, as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? How did we become old? We went from a young, powerful lion in the 60s, and guess what? We became old very quickly. So what happened? Politics happened. Democracy happened. You understand? Politics happened. Democracy happened. Christianity and white Jesus happened. Guess what? We became an old lion. What made us old? Get that in Bible. We became an old lion. We became old very quickly. You understand? Watch this. Baruch 3 verse 10. Let's get there. Baruch chapter 3 verse 10. Read. How happen is it, Israel, that thou art in thine enemy's land, that thou art waxen old in a strange country, mm -hmm. that thou art defiled with the dead. You see what the Lord is saying? The Lord is asking the question, he says, 
What happened, you Israelites, that thou art in your enemy's land? How did you get in your enemy's land? That thou art waxen old in a strange country. That's why he says he's, he couched as a lion and as an old lion who shall rouse him up because we became old in a strange country. What made us old? Democracy, politics, Christianity, drugs. You understand? Nyaupe, social media. You understand? Broken families, okay? Homosexuality, LGBT, all of that stuff. That's how we became old. Christmas, New Year, Mother's Day, Father's Day. You understand? Lack of marriage, whoremongering, killing our kids through abortion and all of that. That's how we became old. We became old in a strange country. He said that thou art defiled with the dead. The nations are defiled. So because we mingled ourselves among them, we became defiled as well, spiritually dead. Go ahead. That thou art counted with them that go down into the grave. We are acknowledged with them that go down into the grave. He says, you are as good as dead. You are useless. We became useless in this land. That's why we couched as a lion. We became an old lion. You understand? Go ahead. Thou has forsaken the fountain of wisdom. We have done what? Thou has forsaken the fountain of wisdom. The fountain of wisdom which we forsook is the laws of God. You understand? So that's why, you know, Bumalema, when they speak, it sounds good, but they don't have solutions. It sounds good, but it, they don't have the real solution. They don't have the right solutions. The fountain of wisdom. Give me Ecclesiastes 1 verse 5. Sirach chapter 1 verse 5. We're not in a hive. I mean, it's the Sabbath day. Oh, praise the Lord. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 5. Read what you got. Okay. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 5. Read. The word of God most high is the fountain of wisdom. You see that thing? The word of God most high is the fountain of wisdom. So the fountain of wisdom that we forsook is the laws of God. Go ahead. And her ways are everlasting commandments. And her ways are everlasting commandments. So we forsook the fountain of wisdom when we got defiled with the dead. We became an old lion in a strange country. You understand? Go back to Genesis 49. Read verse 9 again. Genesis chapter 49, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Judah is the lion's wealth. From the prey, mm -hmm. my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? You see that part right there? It says, as an, oh, it says what? It says, from the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couched as a lion. I mean, he stooped down, it looked like we're about to win. It looked like we are going to overthrow the gov the apartheid government. It looked like that. But guess what? Remember, you might think, oh, 1994. No, 1994 was the illusion of freedom. 1994 did not free us. 1994 made us even more destroyed because now we, we, we just doing whatever the hell we want. You understand? There's all these freedoms that we have and our people are abusing it. Now young men are just in jail. Young black men are joining gangs. Young black men are raping, robbing, murdering, stealing, killing one another. Young black women, what are they doing? They are jewelry, they are popping babies, committing abortions. You understand? Single parent households, you know, spreading diseases in the black community, playing the whore in their father's houses because of 1994. Understand that, okay? So now it's time for Judah to wake up, to not to wake up through politics, but to wake up with the Holy Bible. You understand? Because it looked like in the 60s that something was really going to pop off. With the AC machine in 1976, it looked like something is really going to pop off here. But it didn't. You know why? Because it wasn't, it was not what they were not using the Bible. But what they did is something to know, is something of noteworthy. Understand that. We must not ignore what they've done because the reason what, what they've done is the reason why we have these small freedoms that we have so we can go out and teach our people God's laws. So understand that thing, okay? Now, read verse 9 again. I'm going to show you something. Genesis chapter 49, verse 9. Read. Judah is the lion's wealth. From mm -hmm. the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? 
Who's going to raise Judah up? Who's going to raise Judah up? Go back to Zechariah 12 verse 7. Who's going to raise Judah up? Watch this. Let's see who's going to raise Judah up. It's not politics. Okay. Read that. Zechariah 12 verse 7 again. Zechariah chapter 12 verse 7. Read. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. The Lord shall do what? The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. That's it right there. The Lord shall save the tents of Judah first. Who shall rouse him up? The Lord. The Lord is the one that is going to wake Judah up. The Lord is the one that's going to do that thing. He's going to breathe into us the breath of life. Read on. That the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. You see that thing? The Lord is going to raise the, the tents of Judah first. So the most high God is the one that is going to raise us up. He will put breath in us and we shall live. You understand? Now watch this. Let me show you something. Give me Luke 14 verse 23. Because when Judah wakes up, here's what Judah will do. Luke chapter 14 verse 23. Luke chapter 14 verse 23. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and hedges and mm -hmm. compel them to come in that my house may go be ahead. filled. That my what? That my house may be filled. So read that verse again. Read it again. Read it again. The book of Luke chapter 14 verse 23. Great. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges mm -hmm. and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Because Judah will be in the forefront doing this. The tribe of Judah, which is the so-called Bantus and Negroes, will be in the forefront waking the, the 12 tribes of Israel. You understand? So we're going to go to the street corners. We're going to go to different places in the country to teach our people God's laws. That's the blessing of Judah we read about in Deuteronomy 33, verse 7. So when we go out to the street corners to teach, what are we going to teach and how are we going to teach? And is it something that is, is, is it a new thing that we're going to be doing in these last days? No. I'm going to show you something. Now, let me share my screen. This is a book, this is an old dictionary, okay? I want you to read the title of this dictionary right here. A biblical and theological dictionary. A biblical and theological dictionary, okay, read that. History, manners, and customs of the Jews. History, manners, and customs of the Jews. Who's the author? By Richard Watson. By Richard Watson. Okay, let's see the year it was published. 1832. 1832, right? Let's go to page 786. Now, we're going to go to the definition, because this is a dictionary. So we're going to go to the definition of the word preaching. Read that. Preaching. Preaching is the discoursing publicly on any religious subject. Preaching is the discoursing publicly, publicly of on any religious subject. That's what preaching is, right? Okay, any religious subject. Now, I'm going to show you something here. Now, read that. Some of them open schools or houses of instruction. You see that thing? Meaning the Israelites, they would open schools or houses of instruction, meaning where we would learn the laws of God. Go ahead. And there too, they are disciples. They taught the pure religion of Moses. They did what? They taught the pure religion of Moses. They taught the pure religion of Moses, meaning what? The teachers, the leaders in these last days, they will teach the pure religion of Moses. Okay, now read that. At Nayoth, at, Nayoth. Uh -huh. at Nayoth, in the suburbs of Ramah, there uh -huh. was one where Samuel dwelt. Samuel, this is the prophet Samuel. Okay, go ahead. And there was one at Jericho, and the third at Meaning the schools. So this is going into schools, schools or houses of instruction. 
There was one at Ramah where Samuel dwelt. There was one at Jericho, okay, and a third at Bethel. Read on. To which Elijah and Elisha often resorted. Uh huh. Go ahead. Thither the people went on Sabbath days and at new moons and received uh -huh. public lessons of piety and morality. You see that thing? Public lessons of what? Is that they went on the Sabbath days and at new moons and received public lessons of piety and morality, meaning they taught them the laws of God. So what we're doing, brothers, is not a new thing. Our forefathers did it in the past. During the time of the prophet Samuel, Elijah, and Elisha. Okay, go ahead. Through all this period, however, there was a dismal confusion of the useful ordinance of public preaching. Meaning the people was confused. They didn't understand what's going on. Like we seeing today, when we go to the streets, they have no idea what's going on, but they've never seen it before, and they love to hate us. Read on. Sometimes they had no open vision. Uh -huh. and, the, and the word of the Lord was precious or scarce. Read. The people heard it only now and then. Go ahead. At other times, they were left without a teaching priest and without mm. law. That's what we read in Second Chronicles. Go ahead. And at other seasons again, itinerants, both princes, priests, and Levites were sent through all the country to carry the book of the law and to teach in the cities. To carry the what of the law now? To carry the book of the law mm -hmm. and to teach in the cities. That's exactly what we do in this day. Now, watch this. Read, read that. Many of the discourses, meaning the way we taught. Many of the discourses were preached in camps and courts. They, whoa, in, whoa, whoa. They did what? Many of the discourses were preached in camps and courts. They were, they, they, many of the discourses, meaning where we taught, remember it says publicly, it says were preached in camps and courts and what now? In streets. In what? In streets. In streets. That's where we go to the streets. We teach our people face to face. Go ahead. Schools. Mm -hmm. Cities. Uh -huh. Villages. That's a kasi, kiko kasi mo, villages, that's in the kasis, read on. Sometimes with great composure and coolness. Sometimes with great composure and coolness. Sometimes you don't have to blast. Sometimes you just take your time. That's why it says great composure and coolness. Go ahead. At other times with vehement action and rapturous energy. Yes, that's when you blast in now. That's when you put in Negroes on blast. Go ahead. Sometimes in a plain plant style. Uh -huh. And other at other times in all the magnificent pomp of Eastern allegory. That's when you bring in, you know, heavy stuff. Go ahead. On some occasions, the preachers appeared in public with visible signs. Stop right there. The preachers did what? The preachers appeared in public with visible signs. That's why we have these camp posters right here. It's all biblical. The same thing that our forefathers did, Elijah, 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 the prophet Samuel, is that they came in public with visible signs, the transatlantic, the 12 tribes of Israel and so forth. Go ahead. With implements of war. Mm -hmm. With what? With implements of war. That's why we have the war cry when we go to camp. Read on. With yokes of slavery. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. With what? With yokes of slavery. With yokes of slavery. We show that the transatlantic, the sub Sahara, go ahead. Or something adapted to their subject. You see that thing? Something adapted to their subject. Whatever subject we're bringing out, we're going to bring the history and the, his the historiography along with it. Go ahead. They gave lectures. They gave lectures on these, uh -huh. held them up to view, girded them what? on. Whoa, whoa! They did what? Held them up to view. That's why when we say so, give me the the, the transatlantic slave trade. Give me the sub-Sahara. You hold it up. Yes, it's all spiritual. Don't get it twisted. Keep going. 
girded them on, broke them in pieces, mm -hmm. rent their garments, oui. rolled in the dust, and endeavored by all endeavored. the. It says, and endeavored by all the. Let's see. Yeah, read them. And endeavored with all the methods they could devise agreeably to the customs of their country. Stop right there. Agreeably to the custom of their country, meaning what? Here we experience apartheid, so we're gonna teach according to the history of apartheid. We're gonna use the scriptures to connect the dots. Go ahead. To impress the minds of their audit auditors with the nature and importance of their doctrines. You see that thing? Because we come with the laws of God, okay? So, what we what you see in here is what? Hmm. Okay, read that part right there. He says, we did we open the what? Open the book of the law. And the whole congregation instantly rose up from their seats and stood. Mm -hmm. You see that thing? That's what we read in, 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 in Nehemiah 8. That's what we read in Nehemiah 8. Okay, let me see. Okay, that's it on that. That's it on that. That's it on that. So re read Luke 14, verse 23 again. Luke chapter 14, verse 23. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Because that's what Judah will do. That's the first, the first servant will be Judah. Judah will go out. Judah will wake the people up to wake the rest of the tribes up. Once that happens, Guess what? All over the world, the nation of Israel will start will begin to wake up. And Judah will go into these different lands to wake the people up, to stir the people with the laws of God. And that's exactly what we are commissioned to do, brothers. You understand? When we go to war, you understand? This is the greatest mission on earth. Understand that. Give me that in, uh, get, go back to Revelation 11, verse 11 again. Revelation chapter 11, verse 11. Great. Right. And after three days and a half, the spirit of mm -hmm. life from God entered into them. And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. So the nations are not afraid when we do a toy, when we vote, when we march, we destroy property and so forth. The nations are afraid when we get our minds right with the word of God. Because the Bible is a weapon of war. The Bible is not a true love magazine. The Bible is not destiny magazine. Mm -mm. The Bible is the book of the Israelites to wake up the 12 tribes so we can what? Be delivered and rule the earth. And that's the mission that the Most High God has called us to do. We must stay focused, brothers. We must stay focused. We are at war. We are the nations. It's us against the whole earth. The nations are against us, including our own people, that will not repent. They also, they are also the enemies of God. Understand that thing. So the most High God says we must stand upon our feet and great fear will, will, will fall upon the nations that see the black man getting his mind right. The black man pulling his pants up, the black man putting fringes on, the black man growing his beard, the black man getting married, the black man teaching the black woman and getting married to the black woman, the black woman in order teaching the children, supporting the troops. That's what the Lord is looking for. That's how we're going to put fear on this nation. Ezekiel 37 verse 10. Watch this. Ezekiel, now read what you got. Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 10. Read. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and mm -hmm. the breath came into them. And they lived Ray. and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. You see that thing? It says, when the, once the breath came into us, it says, we lived. You understand? And we stood up upon our feet, an, ex, an exceeding great army. We are the army of the Most High God. I need you men to understand that thing. We are the army of the Lord. We must conduct ourselves like so. A soldier always stay on mission. Don't lose focus. 
You understand? I'm going to end the class right there. All oh, praises to the Lord. Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Okay? For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, to pray. When he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in the remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most high hand for that. All praise to the Lord. All praises to the Mosai.